And welcome to the House Brothers Oval for this round fly clash with uh, Sturt, top side at the moment, and Glenelg coming off a good win against West Adelaide. Should be a beauty. Uh, promises a lot. Uh, join me today. This game brought to you by Cockatoo Ridge Wines is Damien Woodarts. G'day, Jim. And first timer, we've got uh, Jai from uh, Messenger Press with us today. Jai's going to give special comments. And uh, it, it, we, we really uh, pump here. Here we go. The, the umpires bounce the ball. It's the Anzac Day Clash. And uh, your tip, Jim? My tip? I, I think Sturt at home would, would I'd favour them. But uh, Glenelg are in good form. I'll go for Glenelg by uh, 12 to 18. And I've got Sturt by 24. Okay. I haven't given a margin. I'll say it's closer than than under a goal. As, as Crane comes out with the ball, uh, goes forward into side the 50, looking for Herring. Sturter, uh, there's a play, Glenelg player on the bottom of the pack. Game's opened up with a good pace. Conditions were expected to be very uh, wet. And, yeah, there's uh, a forecast uh, top of 17 degrees. We've had 20 millimetres of rain in the last 24 hours, and there's a westerly of 32 k's blowing across the ground. Oh, thanks for the weather report, Damien. We've <laughs> Good. There's a calling there for you. So Richard Williams with the football now. Throws it up deep in uh, Turt's exact attacking zone. <laughs> Chance there for Crane. Slips over. Handballs out towards Sharples. Trapped there by uh, Mules, who's playing his 100th game. The Bay's relieved from defence. Coming out towards Evans and the new player for Glenelg in Holmes. Gets it on towards Backwell. Backwell's got a bit of pace. Sends a Glenelg into attack. Chance there for Bode at the bottom of the pack. Can't get rid of the football because there's a couple of Sturt players on top of him and umpire Carl will ball it up. Quick start by the Bay boys there. Holmes continuing his good form from last week. Okay, as, as Glenelg now get the ball out, it's, it's Ben Kane with the ball, pumps it into the 50, long and strong, and on the end of it is Grimer, the recruit from Geelong. Grimer, patchy game last week for Glenelg. Uh, Shows a lot in the air, but with their very strong forward line with a lot of tall options, uh, the day that they all fire at the same time, Glenelg are going to kick a cricket score. They've, they've got about five big tools to and choose from. And a couple from. of crumbing forwards as well. Yes. And uh, Bode, but of course, the ex-crow. As we watch Grimer come in towards goal, umpire seems to Scott like it off head. the boot. So the Bays open up their account here at Unley Oval. They get the first on the board, and of course, these two teams last year's elimination finalists, and there was only a point, the difference at the end, the Glenelg going on into the first semi-final, Jim. And they did have the wood on them uh, last year, the, the last three games Glenelg won, Sturt won earlier in the season, so um, I don't think they fear Sturt, the other side's uh, finding Sturt, I think their average winning margin's well, more than 10 goals this year. At the moment, yes. Yes. And of course, uh, Ben Nelson won the toss for the double blues, and obviously, as you've picked up, they're kicking to the left of the screen as the Rucks go at it again. Whiteman soccer's off the ground, out towards the new player and Thring. Good tackle there by Thring. Cost perhaps the relation there to the... Uh, famous the, actor. Yes, famous actor and Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Frank would have been a good footballer. No, no. He would have been perhaps a, a rugby player. But okay. uh, Sturt uh, get the clearance from that last stoppage. Wicks has got the football. Handballs to the big Ruckman and DeLuca. He uh, takes yes. a little while to wind up there and, of course, has paid the penalty as Glenelg race away through the agency of Ruwald. Sends the ball out towards one of his tall forwards and Kirkby. Kirkby Grimer offers a great shepherd, but uh, good work there by Warp. The Sturt players sorted oh. out. McGlon seemed to get a heavy knock there and the umpires called play on. Advantage. Chance now for uh, Cubillo. Over towards a teammate. Now Sturt looking to come through the corridor. There's a player on, punched away from Thring. Chance now for the Bays to uh, remount another attack. It's Ruwalt with the football. Measures the kick out towards McConnell. It's too far for that player, but McConnell played for the free kick. Advantage is paid on to Kane. Kane is sort of looking for Grimer. He's leading well at the start of the game, and, and he's been interfered with by Walk, and he's going to take a free kick just on... he will be kicking just on the 50-metre line. A couple of big hits there by Grimer. Big hip and shoulders on the other side of the ground. He's already been suspended and missed one game so far in his short career in the SNFL, so it looks to like the tough stuff. Well, this is Grimer now going for his second shot for goal. He's on a very acute angle. This will test him. Not so much the distance, but uh, it's, uh, he's lining up very uh, methodically here. 
He's got to take, chances. take advantage of that westerly breeze. But, uh, oh, whoa. he's coming back. Not bad effort. It's a bit of a hook on that yeah. kick. And it would seem to be going out in the full, but curved back at the last minute as the Blues take the relieving kick from defence. Tristan Gum with the ball now. He had a solid game last week on Jason Tawney. Tawney was a little bit loose, so Gummy's one that Glenelg really need to keep an eye on today. Okay, as, as Gum's kick go, goes into the centre, and uh, that man in sheet, he's got the ball in, into the uh, centre, right into the middle of the ground to McClay. They're moving nicely here, Sturt, as they've uh, gone to the big Sarge, and uh, uh, Sharples overruns the ball. The pack develops. There's a lot of... Um, couple of Aboriginal boys in the forward line there today. One of them we expected to see was uh, Daniel Pearce, but obviously he may have been recalled by the power because he uh, doesn't appear to be lining up today. Uh, Gum now, out to Wicks. Return back to the club this year. On to Sheedy, the general of the side. Over to Gum again. He's got a lot of the ball, and uh, this time it's Evans. He's been Ooh. caught. Uh, should have gone for holding the ball, but Sturt through Sheedy are able to get out of it. Once again, Sh uh, Sheedy and Wicks are involved, and... Cheedy must have racked up about five touches in the last five minutes. Uh, he is a bit of a ball magnet. He's, he's leading in the, uh, I think, uh, high up in the high possession players in the SNFL this year, as he does most years. Rudolph's gone to Chambers as expected, and Sherwood's picking up Perry. So they're going to have to keep a close check on those Sturt forwards. It's Sharples. That's a great soccer off the ground, but he's missed everything. And it's out in the fall, and uh, the Bays will take the relieving kick in the back line there. Six minutes gone. 1-1 Glenelg. Seven points leading Sturt. Yet to score on the Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. And we saw Sharples make his debut last year at Adelaide Oval. Uh, Damien played a sensational game, and he's gone on with it. Exciting players. Charlie Sharples is the ball from that kick out. It's been thumped over the line. We have a boundary throwing. Okay, it's uh, Sturt have yet to score. They've, had, they've looked promising, but uh, it's all going to help with all the score with Grimer at the moment. One goal, one on the Cockatoo Ridge scoreboard. It's Cranston and uh, DeLuca go up for Ruck. DeLuca over the back gets it away, as, uh, but it's um, John Hinge who gets, takes the take away. But Daniel Wicks strong in the air there. Yeah, not a good kick there by Hinge in that situation. Could have done better with the football as uh, Wick sends the B Blues forward. But Chambers at the back, but in front is Rudolph. And that, uh, now, what's happened here? He's got a 25 metre penalty. Yeah, it's, uh, supporters don't like that. No, no. Don't like. But Chambers, you know, oh, gives away a, a couple of, of threes. Yeah. Yep. But uh, OK, Glenelg now out of defence. Up towards Dolgood, he sets himself, doesn't complete the mark. Chance there for Evans, turns around, he's got a player free on the wing. And it's Crane, Crane dishes off to McClay. Backs up well, he's backed up by McGlon. McGlon sends the Blues forward, he's looking it's too far for Perry there, and Sherwood cuts. No, it's the young player in, I believe it is... Uh, is that McGuinness? Um, uh, not McGuinness, um, McGregor. Yeah, uh, McGregor, yeah. And uh, it's... it's, re it's, it's uh, well, it's ended up with um, Matty Bode now on the wing. We're just trying to forget his name at the moment. This time, Glenelg through Panazzo nearly kicks it out on the floor. Well, I think Murphy. he does. It's yep. Murphy with the ball now. There's a bit of an interchange that just going on now as it's going to be Simon Feast, uh, the stalwart for Sturt. Will play his 200th game this year later on in the year. He's been a, and he's played a few years in Sydney too. So he's been around a long time, Feast. Good player for the club. As Sturt go forward, great tackle there by Ty Allen on the crane. As the, uh, once again, the umpire is going to have to ball it up deep in uh, the pocket, just over 50 for Sturt. One of the best crummers in the league, Luke Crane, always knows to get to that front and centre spot. Yes, and uh, now it's, it's Glenelg through Murphy with a takeaway now as uh, Cabello cuts off the lead. And uh, good tackling there by Fish. Fishlock, is it? Fidok. Uh, Fidok. And there's a bit of um, a bit of aggro going on there with Cabello. Ex-North Adelaide player. There's a couple of ex-North Adelaide players in this dirt lineup. Gums another one. And Perry another. As uh, the ball goes now into the middle of the ground, this time it's the uh, Thring, the, 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 the late inclusion in the dirt side, puts it up to Chambers, but he's beaten again for the ball, and he's disposed of his player, but... Lava to pick the ball up and have a shot for goal and kick the great goal. Brought to the third crowd of their feet. Good lucky that time, I thought. He didn't get into fear with his opponent. He did manhandle Rudolph a bit, just shoved him out of the way, but he's got away with it and he's on the board. 
It's great play there. Now, now I'm just trying to pick up uh, Brad Sugars is that player in the back line for oh, right. Glenelg, number okay. 18. He, he was actually, was he listed in Sturt? He no, no, he was. All games no, he's so in, far this season, right. I think. Yeah. Listed yeah. at number 49, was he? Or? No, no, always 18. 18, yeah. yep. yep, right. Okay. So, ball back in the middle. Sturt get their first on the board. So, it's one point the difference here in this clash. Chance for the Glenelg to uh, send the ball into their forward line. Dolody there, strong. There for Dolody. Glenelg. And we'll have a ball up just on the edge of the 50 metre line. Glenelg's attacking zone. Sturt win the clearance in that situation. Out towards Perry. P ball punched away by Sherwood. A chance there for Herring. Can't pick up the football. Manages to get it to Perry. Fends off one tackler, then has to dish off the handball under pressure. Actually, that's the one thing Glenelg have been doing early in this game, applying a, a lot of pressure on the Sturt players when they've got the football. Yes, and uh, it's Sturt probably haven't been used to it. They've had some fairly easy wins lately. As, uh, as Glenelg now get the ball out, this time it's Rewalds. Found some open territory. It's anyone's ball. First player to it is young 35 in... Um, I always forget his name. Lachlan McGregor. Uh, McGregor, yes, right. No relation to Kenny. As, as Glenelg go forward now, and they're... I don't know if they're making use of them out of their play at the moment. They've got loose players everywhere at the moment as uh, young player handballs over the top. This is um, Fisher at the moment. Over to Holmes, the, the little rover who's BOG last week. And lovely snapshot for goal. It's given Sturt, uh, Glenelg, now seven-point lead on the top two ridge scoreboard. Just gives them another option, Holmes. He's got such a classy on-ball unit at the bays with Bode, McConnell, Backwell, Fisher, those types. So... If Holmes can step up and add to that group, they're going to be tough in the middle. So as we see, uh, Holmes come off after kicking a goal. That's your reward for getting a goal. Go to the a bench. Rest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so hinge straight in the middle for the Bays. Sturt yeah. Sturt are wearing their light blue shorts today, which is uh, I haven't seen for a few years. Okay. Well, they were named in the paper as unchanged, but obviously they did change. Changed their shorts. Yeah, they yeah. changed their shorts and their Guernsey. They were wearing their... Were, a clash Guernsey last week as Backwell oh. makes a meal of that one and allows the Sturt opponents in. Sheedy over to Cubillo, uh, on to Wicks. He's got a player free in the middle and Sturt will send uh, the ball inside their attacking 50. Player there got rid of his opponent. Cranston's there for the base. Prepared to get a high tackle. Had to get up high to tackle Cranston. Handball's back towards Fisher. Fisher has got Hinge. Hinge has got the captain and Mules. Sends the bays down the corridor. Too far there for Dolby. Oh, sorry, Kirkby. On towards Feast. Sends the ball out towards Wicks, who's got a bit of time and space, but uh, ball doesn't bounce nicely. He has to go in and get it. Kick off the ground too far for Sharples. Backwell sends the ball into the corridor. Oh. Fisher tend to get cleaned up there. But uh, umpire lets play go on. McGlon now a chance. His kick smothered. A lot of pressure on here out the middle. And so uh, McGlon gets on to Crane. Crane's got a bit of time and space. Let right. him a look, good look at the goals, and he sends it through for six points. And the double blues respond with another major. They're 2-2-12, two, two, trailing Glenelg 2-1-13. Loves getting forward, Lukey Crane, averaging more than a goal a game in his 25 matches at SNFL level, so always looks to push forward. What a, it's, it's a very good game at the moment, very open, goal for goal, and I hope the weather stays clean for it because... Uh, yeah, this this is the probably two form sides, give or take central districts in the competition at the moment. And this is the sort of challenge I think Sturt will be looking at. They won't, probably wouldn't be thinking that uh, they'd walk away today with a, a ten goal margin, with the uh, form that Glenelg have been in of late. Yeah, and, well Glenelg were a bit patchy last week against West Adelaide, but they when they turned it on, they did it all in one quarter. But they can ch play that sort of footy in verse. As this time it's Murphy, long kick. Just over his teammate's head and McClay knocks up at centre-half back. He's looking for Cabello, who's played quite well today and uh, hasn't been in the side all year. Ex-North player, as I said before. They're just working around. Walk's got it. He has been in good form. And he's just spotted up uh, young Mitch Farmer, who's decided to come off the bench. The power-listed player, good player. Over to Sheedy. Sheedy back to... He's well, running into trouble. trouble. Yep. But he's got out of it. Wicks is lively today. He's got a two-on-one contest here to kick to, and it looks like it'll be easy for Glenelg to get out of this. Big Cranston onto the captain and playing his 100th game, 150th young Benny Mills today. But uh, the, the ball's gone into the area of Grimer. 
not able to take it. Uh, great play by the Glenelg player. I think it's Fisher on the bottom of that pack. Sturt look, look like they want to mop it up, and he, he meant business. Is it? Uh, yeah, it is Fisher. He is a go in and under player. So uh, Cranston and Feast contest the ruck. Chance there for Sturt. Evans comes back, but Sheedy's in trouble. He's tackled straight away by McGregor. Glenelg trying to get it out of there, but there's a lot of players around the football. Uh, Sturt prevail here as McGlon gets it on to Sharples. Sharples now, opportunity to race away, takes a bounce, now sends the ball up to the forward position, looking for Perry, who goes back and takes a nice mark there. Good play by the double blues there. As Perry wheels around, he's got a player free in Chambers, and the two forwards waxing pretty well there. Blues yeah, checking there by the Bay Backman. He's trying to whack, uh, milk a free there, uh, Chambers. He's got a lot of tricks in his book. Probably the dip, most difficult forward to man up with in, in the SNFL. Obviously, that's an understatement, seeing he kicked 100 goals last year. But not only is he strong in the air, he's quick as well. And it's uh, any fullback's nightmare, the form he's been in. Now Sturt have added Perry as well to that mix-up forward. There's a three-prong attack with Herring as well. As Please. we watch Chambers, he's... Missed. Missed that one. Gee, where's it? Helps it as well. Yeah, he's trying to con kick. the goal umpire, I think, with that so one. So it's going to level the scores on the Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. Yes, you yes. couldn't expect a more uh, uh, even game. There's no side with any ascendancy at the moment. Now, just on that situation there, that, that's when we've seen Cranston dropping back for Glenelg in that situation when the ball has gone forward. But uh, Sturt moved it pretty quickly and allowed the players to be free in the forward line as they work it out here from the kick out. Chance there for Gum, eludes a couple of Glenelg opponents, sends the ball out wide. There's no one there for, for Sturt, and there's that man Cranston, who as I said is said. dropping back. He's got a player in support in Sherwood, kicks around the boundary, and he's got Backwell free. Backwell at half back for Glenelg. We've, uh, we've played about 20, min 20 minutes of the first quarter, and uh, there's no real ascendancy, 16 minutes in fact, as we. Um, Find it out of bounds on that uh, playground wing, call it, out there, the outer. And uh, once again, it's Feast and Cranston in ruck. Feast over the back, gets a nice tap away to his dirt uh, carrier, but uh, not going anywhere. Gets wrapped up. Both have got very strong midfields east side, so anticipate some really good clashes today. So ruck's at it. Glenelg through Allen. Had support there. Kick was smothered, though. Chance for Ruwalt. He's got Cranston there and to help out, but a bit of a wrestle on the deck, and up by Williams will ball it up. Doesn't appear to be too much of a breeze out there. It's a little bit blustery on the other side of the ground, but we don't have any flags to sort of let us know which way it might be going, but look pretty even. So Crane there, bobs up, gets tackled, dishes off now. Yet play on, advantage to Glenelg. Now, chance here. If they can get it on to McConnell, they have. McConnell's got a bit of space right in front of him. There's no one in front of him, so he can just you straighten up here. Down. He'll finish it off. So he gets his first, and Glenelg's third. They move on to 3 1 19, leading the double blues 2 1 13 on the Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. One of the deadliest finishers in the competition, Justin McConnell, loves streaming forward like that, so you really got to stay goal side of him at all times. He's a bit of an enigma, isn't he? He does the most uh, skillful things week in, week out. Sometimes he does misses some of the obvious stuff, but he's, uh, he's certainly a, an exciting player to watch, especially around those goals. OK, back in the centre. Big Cranston doesn't get an opportunity, uh, but Glenelg are going to do the clearance through Murphy over the back well, tackled strongly, and uh, crowd wanted holding the ball, but no, the umpire will have none of it, as uh, gives them a chance to sort it out, but... Nothing's happening, so he's going to Nelson's there. He's going to uh, throw it up. It uh, looks like Nelson uh, is going to play in the midfield today. Has been playing a bit in defence. As uh, Sturt go forward this time. Glenelg cut off the, the, the opportunity as it goes deep and in, right in their forward 50. C Cabello, double team there. C not able to get it away. Sturt supporters seem to want everything at the moment. Good Fair play enough. by Sugars on half back there. Left his man to come and attack the ball and got the bounce and kicked it forward. Yeah, I didn't call him. I've, 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 he's a bit of an unobtrusive player, Sugars, but he's had a, quite a few kicks already. Um, as, as this time Sturt are stopping, flooding back and stopping the free flowing play for Glenelg. They're all in there as Bode gets the handball out. Player under pressure in Rewald. The ball 
looking at to Murphy. On to uh, Kirkby. Ben Fisher, uh, Ben Kane, the halfback. Gee, player. that's a good, not a bad shot on goal. He is, he is a, uh, a strong kick, Kane, and plays a long way from goals, but manages to kick a few, quite a lot. So, Sturt out from the kick out. Sharples out the other side. Now comes along the centre square line. Player free, the ever running crane has set speech the task, but he's equal to it. But he's put his teammate and three under pressure, and Glenel will win the ball here. Chance now for uh, Kane. He's got a player in, running in support. Good play by Murphy there. Ducks weaves, gets around. Now he's got time to straighten, sends it towards the teeth of goal. Chance oh. for the big tall forwards of Glenel. Seller is one of them. But uh, good oh, well chip done. around, good disciplined kick there by. McGregor on towards McConnell, and McConnell makes no mistake, he's happy about it because he's got his second, and Glenelg have got their fourth. Big James Sellers was in the box seat for that mark down forward, but Bay Ford's worked hard to keep it alive, and that man McConnell is right where you need him to be. And it was and it was good play by young McGregor as well, he's got the ball out, and they're working well as a unit down there. Uh, they are. They have got those tall forwards, which must put a lot of pressure on defenders. But also these small crumbing forwards like McConnell, he's very dangerous around goal. Played, played on the wing, even played at full forward yep. a couple of times. This time, it's going to be an interesting duel opposed to Whiteman today. He is small, but he plays tall though, doesn't he? He's, he's a complete player. He's, he's got a, he's a lot of bag of tricks to his game. As Glenelg now get it out to the centre again, they're getting a bit on top at the moment. And slow third is uh, Ben Newells, the skipper. Hamble's on this man, Shookers again, he's playing a great game. And it uh, looks like a push in the back to the Glenelg player, the umpire didn't see it. That's uh, Kirkby, as oh. uh, Rewald pisses out the young uh, McGregor. That was a great pass. It's, it's, uh, I'm impressed with Murphy, McGregor, Shookers, these young players today. Uh, Joe, what do you think? Definitely got a run on at the moment, Bays. They've got to make sure they convert now and put the pressure on the scoreboard against the double blues, because we know they'll come back strong. So we're watching McGregor now. He's going to kick from about 40 metres. So it shouldn't have any problem with the distance. But it's that westerly blowing the ball across the face of goal. Three for a minor score. So Glenelg move on to 4-3-27. Leading Sturt 2-1-13. Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. Nearly 22 minutes gone on the Damotainment time clock. OK. As uh, Sturt now bring it in, it's... Marked by Charlie Sharples and nice kick in. He's carried a lot of distance now. He's got loose players everywhere and Evans is on the end of it. It's half forward. He's got a big, big ruckman in Deluca in the middle. Oh. Stalk balks around. Nice little measured kick onto to, uh, the full oh. board in uh, Grant Chambers. But um, Rudolph was able to uh, knock it away. Yeah, Chambers doesn't, he isn't used to having someone being able to keep up with him that close on the lead, but Rudolph's a very athletic player. Good movement by Sturt from the back line there. They caught the uh, Glenelg opponents out. They weren't able to flood back in defence. Got the ball moving very quickly. As Glenelg seem to prevail from this contest. No, they're in a bit of trouble now. Sturt holding them up. And we'll have a boundary thrown right in the outer side of the ground. A healthy crowd here this afternoon today. I'd say it'd be in the vicinity of about 4,000. Yeah, there's, uh, it's, the Crows are on television today from Melbourne. And, and the weather has been very, very severe. So... Uh, well done for those who've come out. It's, well, it's a great game. They should be here. So, kick from the contest there. Finds Gum. Gum dishes off in the 1-2 to Kibillo. Then passes over towards Wicks. Wicks has a bit of time to kick off one step. Chance there for Crane. Hooks around the body and Lux of Fortune. As Farmer's taken the mark right in front of goal and shouldn't have no trouble converting this. In front of his man there, Farmer, where you need to be up forward for the short kicks that just drop in your lap like that. And he's been recruited as defender for the power from uh, Victorian TOC, and uh, it's unusual to see him up forward, but luck's a fortune there. It, um, Chambers was beaten again by Rudolph, but the, the ball was able to slip free and should get an easy goal. Right. Watch Farmer, makes no mistake, as you can tell by the crowd's reaction. He gets the six points, and... Uh, Sturt get their third, their 3-1-19, trailing Glenelg 4-3-27. And the, in the reserves earlier today, the Double Blues won that contest, 13-10-88, defeating Glenelg 8-9-57. Good steadying goal for Sturt there. Glenelg had had a fair bit of the play for the last five to ten minutes, so they put the brakes on them a little bit. 
Okay. We can't have much time left in this quarter. It's been a seesawing affair as uh, th this time it's going to go Glenelg's way through Bode. Lovely quick kick on. Gets it out of that uh, middle area, whereas uh, Sturt defenders and McClay are playing in front. And he's got two opponents to beat, so he just knocks it out of bounds. Gets a chance to his Ruckman to uh, regroup. Uh, there's good players all over the ground today. Some uh, some of the younger guys are playing well. Obviously Sheedy and the usuals getting plenty of the ball. Wicks has played well for Sturt. But uh, very impressed with some of the young blokes, uh, Glenelg blokes today. As, uh, as Sharples now, quick handball out to his skipper and Nelson. Back to Sharples. Wasn't ready for it, but he's, he's put the afterburners on. And a bit of a low, clumsy kick that's gone down. It does favour um, young Crane in front. But uh, once again, out of bounds on that... Uh, playground side okay so we have a boundary throw on the outer side 25 minutes gone first term DeLuca and Seller the AFL listed players contest comes out towards Backwell gets rid of one oh. opponent gets a high oh. tackle there and he's fallen to the ground he's going to take a little while to get up here Brett Backwell yeah He's either milking it or he was. Uh, no, I think it was a pretty high knock there. Yeah. Definitely contact to his head. Surprised the umpire yes. didn't um, deem it as um, 15 metres or 25 metres for for a late late tackle. No, he's staying down. Yep. Yeah. They might be calling for the stretchers. Uh, yep. The Gee. blood rule. Yeah, his nose. So, just, so definitely got a high knock there. As yeah, he's holding his nose. Yeah. Not be much time left in the quarter, but. Interesting to see what plays out now. And it's allowed, uh, of course, that to hold up has allowed all the Sturt players to flood the Glenelg forward line. There is only a couple of Glenelg players just past the centre circle. I think it's just a bit of claret. He, he should be all right. He's a pretty tough player, Brett Blackwell. And uh, they'll just um, patch him up a bit and bring him back out, I'd say. Nothing to worry about. He looks a sort of happy to spec spec to see, although the umpire must have seen much in it though. To, uh, yeah, I think I think the player the was probably was going for the football. It's Panazzo now kicks the ball. Wow, over, that's a high the back kick. side of the ground, but it's gone so high. It's given the Sturt player a chance to to contest it, but uh, Hinge was good enough. But his kick's high and up and over as well. So I don't know what's going on there, but Ben Nelson is playing quite well on the wicks. Wicks has fed it back out to Nelson. It's good great play by Sturt. Now to Evans. He takes on the tackler but gets away with it. It's on the uh, Charlie Sharples. It's, it's a good play by Sturt. Showing a bit of pace. He's gone for a bit of a screw punt into the forward line. Hope for the best. Oh. And Sturt, uh, the Glenelg defender, dropped the chest mark, which uh, gives Sturt a chance to get a regroup. Had to run it forward then, Sturt. They looked up and there was absolutely no one inside 50, but good dash by Charlie Sharples to take a man on. So umpire Williams throws up the football. Chance now for Farmer. Leading in the race for the ball. Now he's got a handle on it. Kicks around the body. Nice. Has a look at the goals. Wow. Oh, no. Bounced away. The assert supporters in the stand thought, thought yeah. that went through. It did but it had, uh, trickled over the line. We'll have a boundary throw in. He looked very impressive up forward today, Farmer. Okay. And as the umpire throws it in. Not much time left. The Ruckman uh, Big Deluca gets the hands on it. And uh, Sturt players are able to get couple of clean possessions but they're brought in by uh, Panozzo and Mules. Really can't afford to give up a goal here the Bays. They deserve their one goal lead at the moment. So DeLuca gets a knock but uh, it's Murphy who uh, gets the clearance for Glenelg but there's no one out on the half back line. Sharples is leading race for the ball but it oh. beats him. We'll have a boundary throw in and nearly 30 minutes gone of this first term. Glenelg are up by eight points on the Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. Okay, as we we must be very close to half to, uh, quarter time as DeLuca in Ruck is dominating the uh, hit outs at the moment. And he's, uh, he's having a pretty good season, finding it very hard to get into the power side. So that's the siren, as we said. So on the Cockatoo Ridge scoreboard, Sturt 3-1, a trailing the 4-3. That's, as Damien said, eight points the difference. I'll just give you the, the goal kickers for Glenelg, Grimer, Holmes, and two to McConnell. And for Sturt, Crane, Chambers, and Farmer. We'll be back shortly with the bring you the second quarter.
Okay. Okay, welcome back, everyone, wherever you happen to be watching this uh, DVD around Australia, or perhaps around the world, as uh, umpire Williams restarts the contest here at Unley with the Glenelg side up by eight points. It's uh, Ruckman there for uh, <coughs> Glenelg is unable to get at the football, but uh, Crane sweeps on it and immediately dishes off very nicely to the leading Herring. He props, he's got someone up forward. Farmer knocked away from him. Ty Allen in there for Glenelg. Mules at the bottom of the pack, dishes out towards Rudolph. Rudolph's got a short kick because he's got a couple of players free. One of them is Hinge, overruns the football, goes back after it again, supported by Bode. Of course, both delisted by Adelaide last year. Perhaps some other there, that was one of the reasons why. As Sturt gets the turnover, chance now for Evans, hasn't got much room to move, pops it up towards Perry, he drops a mark. Chance for Sherwood, and he got, okay, in, the, got, got in, in the front position there. And a free kick to Glenelg. And they chip it around. And they find the new player in Holmes. Holmes now. Uh, oh, he nearly got caught by Farmer. Farmer shows a lot of pace and uh, back back to uh, Chambers. Who's, uh, Farmer what, rounded him up there. Yeah, <laughs> playing well, Farmer. As the ball comes into the Perry direction, not able to take it. Charlie Sharples tries to take the ball off the hands, but wasn't good enough. Uh, Ty Allen's in there. Pack develops. Looks like it's going to be a ball up. Couple of chances in a row for Perry there, just hasn't been able to hang on to them, but no. good pressure by the Sturt forwards to keep the ball inside. So it's probably uh, good pressure there by the Glenelg defence. They held up pretty well in that first term. Sherwood and Rudolph and other uh, players back there. Mules, chance now for Crane. Tackled immediately, Kane dishes off quick, lightning quick. Umpire didn't think it was a throw, Sturt supporters did. Boat races away from the contest now. He's got a player free up the ground in McGregor. So McGregor gets a bit of a shove in the back. Now goes right back to kick to deliver. Whoa, oh. a high fly there from Walk. But uh, he's interfered with his Glenelg opponent in Seller. And Seller just, uh, just checking his head for uh, cuts. Was a, was a spectacular leap by Walk. I didn't know, know that was part of his game. But uh, I don't know if he'd held the mark. Would the umpire still paid it? I think he would have He would have paid the mark, definitely. It just, uh, but he still would have interfered. As McConnell's trying it's to run away from that one. Cubillo there. Matty Bode's starting to get involved a little bit more towards the end of the first quarter and uh, early on in the second term. Yeah, and Bode was a fairly quiet player for Glenelg last week, but he bobbed up with three really good goals. And he, he probably didn't have any more kicks than that, but yeah, a very useful game for that reason. As uh, Sturt through Sheedy are able to clear. They're looking good at the moment. This time, uh, McGlone, uh, the ex-South Adelaide, best of Ferris from last year, gets the ball out to in Nelson. Nelson back to walk. Sturt are going to work it out through handball this time. As, uh, just, just taking it easy here this time. It's Gum, probably just back, back with a centre wing. Not long way from his normal half-forward flank. Back to Nelson. Gee, Nelson's uh, been an influential player for Sturt today. Really leading from the front as he... Uh, usually does as he kicks this time into the oh. area of the Sarge this time in Ian Perry who started the season spectacularly at Nord Oval in round one and this time fed the ball to Chambers uh, Rudolph played a really good game today but Chambers does get a lot of supply and this time Perry set him up certainly not going to keep him quiet all day it's just a matter of accuracy here and uh, he would he would expect after his season last year to be on line for 100 this year with a man of beautiful kicks that normally feed him guys like Sheedy, Crane, on that occasion, Perry. But uh, you can see this that on that occasion as well, Perry had to use his body. I think that's what the Sturt forwards are going to have to do to uh, shake their Glenelg opponents. But uh, as we speak, Chambers has missed. Second miss. Yep. And Glenelg from fullback. Over towards Backwell. Kicks to the middle ground. Matthew Dulder gets rid of his opponent. But uh, don't see too much difference between Perry's a minute earlier in that one. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Good point, Joe. And uh, comes out towards Herring. He comes back in board. I don't know what he's thinking there. Nelson's under pressure. He had a couple of Glenelg opponents to beat. Did well, though. Yes. Whiteman there. He's tackled immediately. And we'll probably have a stoppage in the middle here. They've thrown yeah. both Sheedy and Nelson on the ball this quarter, Sturt. Have the seasoned hard bodies in there. 
So umpire Williams throws up the football. Nelson. Wicks. Another stoppage. Yes, Nelson uh, playing in the centre. I, I saw them earlier in the year and he seemed to have a more of a minor role on the side, like they were just trying to develop the younger players. But he's back, as you say, Joe, uh, marshalling the troops and playing very well today. As uh, the ball now comes into the centre of uh, 50 metre area for Sturts, very open in, in that area at the moment. It's out there on the uh, only Nissan side of the ground. And uh, yeah, it's going to be thrown in. Sturt probably started a little bit better this quarter. They've done more attacks. As the ball now goes in, it's Feast and Cranston flies for it. Crane runs into a brick wall but gets the ball out very well. But the no players are able to get it away through Murphy onto Fisher. Another quick handball on. That's really good play. Sugars now takes, got plenty of time. The running Rudolph uh, takes the ball. Box back to 1-2, one, back to Sugars playing well. Now it's a long kick into that McConnell direction. But, uh, yeah, but Matty Bode suckers the ball brilliantly. That's uh, Matty Bode at his best. Cristiano Ronaldo then, little toe poke to keep it alive and then have it through with the left foot. Good work there by Glenelg and uh, good movement of the football and uh, didn't allow time for um, Sturt to players to get back and flood and a fairly open forward line. It appears at the moment that McConnell is playing, but started in that goal square in that contest. So he's dragged uh, Cubillo back and we've got Seller right next to him. There's a double square. change so now. Uh, 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 Kirk Kirk and um, McConnell. Um, go on the half forward line yeah. they're up there so they're pretty uh they've spread out their forwards as the play recommences in the middle sturt win the clearance on this occasion sherwood dishes out towards panozzo panozzo now has got a player up the line it's mcgregor unable to complete the mark over the line good pressure there by mcglon noticing McGlone. jade sheedy start to come into the game a little bit more and have a bit more of an influence i think he really enjoys not having to be the man to, to get the ball every time for Sturt and he can sort of hang back behind the pack and marshal the troops. So, as this time the, uh, the, the no, doesn't favour anyone the throw in and it's going to probably have to be up for another bounce up. So Very impressed with young um, McGregor. Not much it, of him. Yeah, he's looked pretty good so far in this game. Just uh, looking at the contest there, we've got Backwell and Crane wearing each other like a glove at the moment. The two twos. Yes. As uh, Glenelg now through Benny Mules on to Thomas Holmes as he has a nice stab kick into oh. McConnell and that's brilliant play by Glenelg. And that's what you that's talked about, Jim, the yeah. uh, the small who plays tall. He had a yep. long reach there to yep. uh, take that mark and leading out from the goal square and he'll go back and perhaps kick his third. I think well, he's straight in front, he could miss. If he was on an angle, I saw it last week, he kicked some sensational goals on the angles, but he's not as confident when, he's, when it's easy for some reason. He loves doing the spectacular, Justin McConnell. Straight through the middle, though. Makes no mistake. <laughs> right, he started with three goals. You so. tried to give him <laughs> kiss the well, death. No, he's, he, he's such, I, I think he's uh, one of the most exciting players in the SNFL. I don't know, it's every time I see him play. As you say, he can, that mark, he was stretched full well, well to take that. That's right, and I don't know why now he wears a long sleeve Guernsey because he's got so many tricks up his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's probably carrying a couple of pounds. He doesn't look like an athlete either, does he? <laughs> but just something about him, he's, he's uh, always there when they need goals. Whether well, he's even in the wing, he'll still pitch in with a goal. <laughs> yes, so play back in the middle. R Cranston and Feast contest, but... Uh, Neither side able to win the clearance on this occasion. Umpire Williams will take the football again. He Feast gets the knock this year. time. Uh, yes. McConnell. Yes. Good return. Wicks at the bottom of the pack. Crane there. Gets a loose kick forward. On to Evans. Again, Sturt players under pressure. Not going anywhere. And, of course, that's, that's something I think Glenelg have been doing pretty well in this game so far, Joy. Big Simon Feast starting to get his hand to the ball now as well. It's a luxury having him come off the bench, that's for sure. Yeah, it's one of the best rucking combinations in the SNFL, Feast and DeLuca. And they've got Kurtz as a backup player as well, who's quite good, just can't obviously play all three at the moment. As the umpire now throws up again, this time it's uh, Feast, a big roundhouse, beautiful tap really, because it gives his runner an opportunity in gum, but uh, Benny Mills mops up. This time it's over to Holmes, back there under a lot of pressure, stirred it through the frame. Over to the, the impressive farmer, puts it on his boot, oh. and he's put it straight through the middle. The crowd are up in the uh, Jack Odie stand. Farmer has, has shown a bit of class today. 
Trying to get him that power side. He's certainly looking like their most dangerous forward at the moment. Farmer on the ground. He knows where the goals are and, and has pretty good skills. That was very good off uh, just a couple of steps there and not much room there and converted truly. And uh, Sturt uh, badly needed that one. They're uh, trailing here and um, certainly being challenged at their home ground this afternoon by this Glenelg side. They're on two wins and one loss out of three games so far this season. Sturt, of course, undefeated with four wins. Back in the centre, Feast got his hand to the football. But uh, Cranston at the bottom there tries to get it to Allen. He, he's got Sh uh, Sharples riding him. <laughs> Put the saddle on there. And umpire Daniel Cow will throw the football back up. Out towards Sheedy. He's certainly been quiet by his standards. Whiteman oh. slips over it at the uh, inopportune time, but fortunately for the Sturt side, he's got a shove in the back. And so Sturt will uh, go forward. <laughs> Gee, a bit of a, a high hand pass there from uh, Fisher and giving back the football to Whiteman. There's always a bit of aggro with Whiteman around. I agree with you, Joe, about uh, Big uh, Feast. He's, uh, he's just handed about four breakaways to, their, to the players at the moment. They're just as you say, that is coming off, I think. Yeah, well, there's another good ruckman coming on, so in... in the big fella in uh, De Luca. As, as Farmer on his own again. Jeez, Jeez he's impressive today. He's got acres to move, Farmer. <laughs> yes. McGowan will be getting he's on the carrying. horn straight away, I think, to whoever's on him to get it. Here we Chambers. go, one on one, Chambers. Good wrestle there, good body work there to take, complete that mark against Rudolph. Rudolph Position did everything good. Yeah. yeah, not much you can do one on one with Chambers when he's got the sit on you like that. He is a big, powerful man. And the players are all congratulating Farmer at the moment. They're uh, probably going to give... This is his goal again. Um, great teamwork by Sturt. Lumpire's moving him around. And Mo well, making sure the Glenelg players just to the uh, left of Chambers don't creep too close there as we watch Brandt come in and kick truly. He gets his first. Second. Second. His second. He's had a couple two. of misses. Yeah, yep. he's had a couple of misses. So... Sturt here fighting back. They're on 5-2-32, trailing Glenelg 6-3-39. So back to seven-point margin on the Cockadoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. Really good game to see what the Double Blues are made of today. They haven't been challenged at all so far this season, and they're certainly being challenged now, so it'll be interesting to see how they respond. And, and the making of a crackerjack game at the moment. Both sides are playing good footy. It's not as if one side's dominating. They're both having their moments, and good players all over the ground. This time it's uh, Big DeLuca tries to take it out of ruck, but Cranston does the same. Over to Matty Bode. The ball bounces uh, into the forward area. Crowd's calling for a free, but this young fellow in McGregor knocks it up to Kirkby. Can't take the mark, but uh, Rewald snaps truly for one point. Threatening play there by Glenelg. Good touch by McGregor. So, McGlone for Sturt. Kicks out to Cabillo, back to McGlon. McGlon over the top. He's got the captain, co-captain in Nelson. Sends it down the line. Whiteman's got a bit of space. Takes it just in front of him. He had Pinozzo bearing down on him, but managed to get on to the new player on the ground. And Fidok got Crane's got space. Runs into it and a good bit of uh, play there by the Sturt side. And Luke Crane has got the chance to line up for his second. Second goal. Yeah, great work by Whiteman then. Turned his player inside instead of pushing back off the mark and enabled the double blues to play on and Crane was streaming forward and got on the end of it. So just watching Luke Crane now. Approach to goal. Kicks. No, it's going off to the right. It's, it's not coming back there. And another minus score. So it's now 5-3 playing 6-4 on the Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. Rudolph to bring the ball in. Uh, there's, there's no zone or anything. Every, it's just man on man at the moment, so he's, uh, he's just going to kick it as long as he can. Goes out to that outer side where probably the Ruckman are, but there's plenty of Sturt players there to get the opportunity, but Glenelg were good enough through Fisher. On to Matty Bode, working at well. Fit, um, ben Kane now takes the ball. Loose kick as McGon oh, pushed in the back to play on as young McGregor comes in. Sturt through Walker, able to get it out. Sheedy's in there. And the ball will go out of bounds. It's about half forward for Glenelg. 
Unlucky not to get a free there, Scotty Maglone. He's really added another dimension to this dirt back line this season. Good recruit from them. Very good recruit. If you get best and fairest at the club and uh, find yourself at another club, there's, that's a good pickup. Certainly wouldn't happen too often, I wouldn't think. <laughs> as uh, as Gunnell now umpires blowing his whistle and he's going to give the free. I didn't see what it was for. Might have been off the ball. And it's Doldig, is it, that kicks the ball into Kirkby. Yep. Takes a knee. Oh, he's no. put, couldn't quite take it. Uh, an open forward line. Charlie Sharples now. Bounces once. It's going to get a nice shepherd there from uh, Herring. Takes the player out. It was all legal. As he runs very close oh. to the boundary line. <laughs> he didn't have any feet. <laughs> and he still he's tried to keep the ball in. Yeah. And he's oh, pushed oh, over again by the Mills. Richard Williams didn't have any to do with that. He didn't. That's a bad example from the captain there of the Glenelg side because Sharples was already down on his feet <laughs> after running uh, uh, half an hour and 25 minutes. <laughs> Sends the ball in towards oh. Perry. Spillage goes towards Whiteman. Too far for Herring. He has to oh. go back. He's worried by uh, the Glenelg backman there. One of them is bowed. And we have a boundary throw in deep in Sturt's attacking zone. And, uh, well... Game's <laughs> hotting up. Yes, <laughs> lining up. We've got a real contest on our hands here this afternoon. Great game, the Pine Lodge match of the day here at Unley. Boundary line throw in, Panozzo reads it best. He's got the player in Holmes. He's backed up well by Backwell. Backwell sends it out towards Doldig. Leading, leading walk in the race of the football now. Goes back now. Wants to send it up forward where McConnell's one out with Cubillo. McConnell does he's get a bit of holding there. The umpire saw that right on the spot there. And, well, I, I thought it was the McConnell that held out Cubillo right. in that situation. How do you read it, Jai? No, I think he just tugged the Guernsey a little bit as McConnell was trying to turn him and, and run on with the ball. But he's lining up for his fourth now. Could nearly need to make a change soon, Rick McGowan. So watching McConnell now. He's going to kick just inside 50. Kick perhaps came too close to the man on the mark. Ball's knocked out. Chance for Glenelg here with the crumbs. No, pushing the back. Yes, it is. And it's the big fella in Kirkby. We'll go back and have a set shot on goal. Haven't seen much of him so far today, but could put this one through and get his confidence up. He, he kicked a couple of goals last week and he didn't do a lot else. He's uh, over the last year and probably earlier this year. He's just probably in and out of the games, Kirkby. He's got, a, got all the skills. Yeah. And uh, it's just another one of those tall forwards that they uh, the Lord can boast of. Yeah, one of those guys that needs a couple of big games in a row, a couple of bags maybe, just to make him feel that he belongs at this level. And certainly got good hands and a good stretch. As we look to the Cockatoo Ridgewine scoreboard, it reads 7 4 46 Glenelg, leading Sturt 5 3 33. It's uh, 80 minutes gone on the demotainment.com time clock. And a bit of whistle blowing happening. What's oh they've lost the football, have they? No, it's yeah, umpire's uh, down here on the boundary line, just looking for a spare football. Can't be the reason, surely that that should be easy to get. No, there's no umpire in the middle. He's down here on the boundary. Very unusual. Um, it's obviously gone to uh, there a resident is, yeah. of Unley. <laughs> you you would think the uh, the teams would have the balls ready to give out. They shouldn't have to wait that much time. McGowan's just made a change. He's taking oh, Farmer. Oh, the other ball back now, too. Oh, the other ball. So <laughs> there we go. He's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the football sorted out. Where did that other one come from? I don't know. Umpire had it under, know. His, under his shirt, did he? <laughs> I reckon took it from a kid. Yeah. Okay, so umpire Carey back in the middle. And it's been an infringement. And it's going Glenelg's way. So... Well, they have been challenged, but uh, they're responding well, getting uh, the advantage of a couple of free kicks as Pinozzo sends the Glenelg forward once more, looking for a seller, and he's taken a... No, it's Grimer, oh, and nearly took a great mark there. Ruwalt's tackled over line, and boundary throwing. Rick McGowan's moved Mitchell Farmer from the forward line, put him back just in the last minute or so, looking to tighten things up a little bit down back. So boundary yep. throwing. De Luca over the top, but only as far as Bode. Bode's tackled immediately. We'll have another stoppage. We're at nearly hitting the 20-minute mark uh, on the second quarter. 5-3, Sturt, Glenelg, 7-4. Great game. Brought to you by Pine Lodge today. As uh, Mules is in there, great, 
Good hands there by um, Matty Bode. Gets the ball out, but uh, Sturter able to intercept. Oh, mm. head head high. The Charples is again on, on to uh, Cabello. And Sturt player this time uh, in McGlone's been met by the Grinnell defence. He means business. It's going to be uh, a little bit of aggro here. Richard Williams is going to have to break this up. Now, and just to Jai, another example there was Evans, the player, who was tackled immediately when he yes. got that football. They seem to be worrying Evans. They're wearing him. Uh, influential player with Sturt this year. He has been very dangerous. Loves to swing out on that left foot and, and get the ball forward. So, want to keep an eye. Very so. intense at the moment. There's uh, a lot of packs forming. No one's really letting anyone get away. Very important game in the context of the season. So, as, yep, as... Uh, it's a seller up for the ruck, but it goes to the advantage of uh, player in Thring. Thring sends the Blues forward, but uh, a bit of holding there, and the Sturt supporters rise to their feet and applaud Daniel Cowell as they get a free kick. Chance for Chambers and dives, takes a slip catch right behind Sherwood, who missed the football there, and he's have another set shot on goal here at his home ground. Lining up for his third now, big gas. And that was um, Herring that passed it on to him. I, Herring hasn't had a bit of a dirty day. He's fumbled a bit today, and he did there again, but uh, did well to make up for it, and it was a bullet-like pass, nice and low. Once again, it had, gave his opponent no chance to spoil it. So pinpoint pass there by Herring. Gives Chambers a chance. Oh, a bit of a pie floater, but it gets the result, gets the six points. That's his third. Yep, yep. And the double blues hit back. 6-3-39, trailing Glenelg, 7-4-46. Cockatoo Ridgewine scoreboard. Damo tame at time clock reads 22 minutes gone. Certainly not the prettiest kick off the boot, that one, but it's got three now, which wouldn't be making Rudolph too happy, I don't think. He's done quite, quite well on Chambers today, but... It's just a lot of supply coming forward. Could be a bit of a shootout, McConnell and Chambers today, the way it's going. One, uh, one, one in, and, and uh, both got three goals. As uh, the ball goes up, getting close to half time, it's a 22 minute mark. Glenelg are able to get the centre clearance through uh, back well, but um, yeah, Thring's uh, soccer the ball. Glenelg, another chance. There's a bit of fumbling going on here. It's, big, uh, it's crane on the end of it. Beast. But, uh, Ty Allen on to Mules, couple experienced players there. Back to Allen, back to Fisher. Oh, got uh, the rain starting to come in as well for uh, to spoil this game. Unfortunately, as Panozzo kicks the ball very, very high into the forward line, and mark it if you can. But uh, Doldy, great handball out to McConnell. Great chance for another goal. Good play by the Nog there, uh, Joy. Yeah, that man again, sitting forward of the pack. Quick handball out, and he's going to take the most of that advantage. But interesting to see what impact the rain has on this game. Instead uh, of probably got the, the bigger bodies in and around the ball, but Glenelg skilled players like Backwell and that, your skills are only going to stand out more in the wet weather. So It's been such a free-flowing, entertaining game. I just wonder what the rain will do to it. So umpire Cow back in the middle, throws the football up, rucks at it. Feast and Seller being moved into the ruck. But Murphy wins the ball, gets Backwell to send the Bays forward, up towards McConnell, punched away by Cubillo, McClay's there, he's in trouble, he's got to get rid of the football, gets it out, chance there for Farmer, gets it on towards Cubillo, probably happy to see the boundary line, he does, so we'll have a boundary throw in deep in Glenelg's attacking zone, nearly 25 minutes gone, this second term. And Glenelg up by 13 points. Conditions very, very trying at the moment. Uh, they'll be looking forward to half time. Hopefully the rain settles as Evans gets the handball out now. On to Wicks, leaves the ball behind. It's going to be slippery out there for a while. As uh, Walk, nice handball on to his uh, teammate. And Evans takes the ball, steadies. On to Wicks again. Which looks out the flat side of the ground. There's a two on one comp contest here. Glenelg are able to mop up through Mules. On the Murphy, but uh, it's dropped by Fisher. It's very slippery out there at the moment. Good work well, by Thring. As, uh, yes, he gets the ball on. Uh, out, out in open territory at Murphy's too good. And Glenel, this time through Ben Kane, has found uh, Panozzo all on his own on the outer wing. And there's an opportunity for uh, Backwell now. He's got plenty of space. He can do whatever he really likes with it. He's going to kick it in long. McConnell's at the back of the pack. And it's gone over his head for... It's hit the post. One point. 
So good, good move there by Glenelg. Look very fluent in uh, very trying conditions at the moment. So Farmer, as you can see, signals he's going to go long, which means he's goes short. Now he goes long. Nice long kick, looking for it's Feast. Finds him. Good kick there from defence. Simon Feast got a player on immediately. Wix has got some space. Got away from his opponent now. Here's a chance for the double blues as the player in Evans now finds some space. Chance to send them forward over towards Perry, but he's got three oh, players to beat. Right One on. of them is Rudolph. Stands tall in front of the pack, takes them up. Waste no time, sets up Murphy. Punched away by Sharples, but Murphy goes back in after it again. He's got to Rewalt uh, free. And Glenelg will just steady things down here as the rain buckets down here at Unley. The wind's picked up as well. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, and it's really coming down. So this really? is going to be really tough to play. Yep. So probably going to have all 20 millimetres of rain <laughs> in this next 10 minutes as McClay takes a nice mark against his opponent. Just chips laterally. Over to Crane. Crane sends the ball now on the diagonal, but uh, Pinozzo in best position. Reads it best. Good mark. He's got plenty of players on there. They're all they're all calling for it, but he's uh, letting he's the Sturt players take uh, defend him. But there he is, that man, McConnell. Where's he playing now? He's come well out from full forward. He's got uh, Matthew Dolu there, but it's thumped away from him. And we'll have a boundary throw in. Just uh, won't be too many... Uh, Seconds, minutes left in this half. Rain not having too much of an impact yet. I don't think we've seen anyone sort of drop a ball since the rain started coming down. But once it gets a little bit slippery, things will get a lot tougher. Yeah, it's windy as well. So it's really, really awful conditions for, for good footy. But uh, to their credit, they are playing very well with it. As, um, as time, it's a high tackle. The umpire's seen it. But that's... Uh, is it? Ty Allen out there. Yeah, with the blue boots. Yep. And he's um, he's going to just take time. Not many. There's a couple of leads on. He's he's just going to bombing along and hope one of the tools can take it. Good luck to him in these t tough conditions. But Sturt are able to mop up through McClay. Kicks it out of bounds. That they're peeling for a deliberate. Bit hopeful. He he didn't really uh, he disguised it very well if it was deliberate. There's. Uh, Boundary Ampa throws it in. It's the 27 minute mark. And uh, it's still Glenelg up. And uh, Sturt now this time. Through. Met very. Oh, brilliant play by Rewald. He, he nearly he snatched, stole that goal, but Sturt through oh. here. Um, are they going to rush it through, through Sharples? Yep, one point to Glenelg. Good pressure by the Bay forwards to force that one. So Nelson kicking out from fullback. Perhaps t t enough time for a late goal by the Blues. Well, it's sort of seemed to have steadied things down here. Mark at the back was Feast. Waste no time. Sheedy's got a, the break and finds Gum, who we haven't called much since that first term. Gum's got a player in three. Thumped away from him by Mules. Good play. Follows up. Now he needs support. There's no one there for Glenelg. Player at the bottom of the pack seems to have been locking the football between his knees. And umpire Cal... Gives him the benefit of the doubt. We'll have a ball up right in the middle of the ground. Lucky to get away with that one, Benny Mules. I don't think he got too much of the ball with that hand pass. So Rucks at it again. Backwell being worried by Evans. Backwell paddles the ball in, but Sharples reads it best. Onto the feast. Chipped by Sheedy. I don't know whether it was a meant meter. for the player <laughs> in Evans. Yes. Gets it back again, Jade Sheedy. Up towards Perry. And no, he's, yes, he's been paid. No, he wasn't paid the mark. I thought he controlled that pretty well, given the conditions. But uh, umpires haven't allowed for that. And there's a free kick because the player has kicked out on the full. And Sturt will take the kick on the outer side of the ground. Handy little break the Bays have got here, especially if it's going to continue raining like this. That 15-point margin's going to look a lot bigger than what it is. OK, Sturt, one, one last chance for an attack. They really need another goal as they go deep down. The big Perry's gone up on his own, taking on his chest. Been relatively quiet today, the big Sarge, but he's kicked nicely over to Chambers. Oof. Couldn't take it. As uh, Big Feast has the opportunity this time. Doesn't know what to do with it. Over to Charples. This time it's Whiteman. Unusual seam in the forward line. And that's probably why. He only just managed to point. Yeah, three it was. Three was it? Yes. No one. Oh, they've got the three same sort of haircut.
for a point. <laughs> so as we look to the Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard here in the Pine Lodge match of the day, of course, you can get this DVD and many others from the SNFL season by contacting Pine Lodge on 827-11669. And you can read the scoreboard there. It's 6440, the Blues, 8654. Glenelg, you've got the goal scorers there for us, Jim. Okay, for Glenelg, who uh, obviously got more. Four to Justin McConnell's playing a great game. I don't know how many he's going to end up with in these conditions. Uh, now, one each to Grimer, Holmes, Bode, Kirkby. And for Sturt, three, goal two to Brett Chambers, one to Crane, and two to Farmer. Welcome back to the uh, House Brothers Oval for the start of the second half. Sturt v Glenelg as uh, the Ruckman fly. Cranston gets the first tap, but Sturt are able to get it from the clearance into their forward line. Perry's in front, but uh, beaten the ball by his Glenelg opponent, where Kane didn't quite take the mark, and it's gone out of bounds. This game's brought to you, uh, the callers today, Damien Woodards, Jim Huff speaking, and J uh, Jay Bednell from The Messenger. And I uh, hope you're enjoying it, uh, watching at home on your DVD. And, of course, so just uh, uh, today, just checking the, uh, the betting, Glenelg were $3 today and Sturt were $1.35. Gee, that was short. Mm. So, Bro Feast, tackled. Sharples, handball and hope to space for Crane to run onto and dribble a kick towards goal, but he's missed. Minor score. Could work by the big Ruckman just to get enough pressure on, on Crane then and force it behind. So Rudolph with the kick out. Got a player in Kane there on the other side. Calling or signalling for someone to come up the line. A couple of the forwards make the space. Cranston's there. That uh, player in appears to be the younger player there for Sturt getting tackled and to have a boundary throw in. And the big the big duel today has been Rudolph the um, Brett Chambers, how do you think that's gone, Joe, as far as uh, who's won the contest? Rudolph was very good early. It's it's one of the things with Chambers is that because he's their key target, the ball's just going to keep coming in all day sort of thing, and it, you don't have to play a bad game, and he's kicked four or as five it, goals. As Evans has a shot on goal, kicks around the body, makes yeah. no mistake, and Sturt a burst out of the blocks after half-time. Great goal there by Craig Evans, and Sturt get their seventh play, 7-5. Seven 47, trailing Glenelg, 8654. That'll get the crowd involved. Yes, and Sturt, yeah. well, needed probably half time address. They realise they're being challenged here. And, uh, well, uh, probably uh, at half time they had the game sewn up last week against South Adelaide. Mm. But uh, Glenelg really uh, come out to guns blazing this first half. and but Sturt have to uh, respond here. And I was listening to a lot of their supporters at half time. They'd almost written them off, expecting this is a loss. That's how, uh, you know, and they're right back in it. There's only seven points in it. As Glenelg now go forward again, but Sturt are in front this time. Nice mark by... Uh, Fittock. Fittock, yeah. The Northern, right. from the Northern Territory. Okay, he's over to Gum. Now he's just measuring off. He's gonna probably go sideways. He's, uh, most of the leads are covered now. He just goes, oh, he's going to miss this up. No. There's two on one there, and uh, Nelson was able to take it. But uh, <laughs> Backwell and Nelson don't seem to like each other yeah. very much, and uh, Backwell's not letting him get it, giving away the, the penalty, but he's making his presence felt. Get Richard him. Williams is going to take get rid of that ball. Yeah, he doesn't like it. That must have been the kids' ball from the first half. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> just left out from the mini league. Yeah. There and, you go. Uh, Oh, he met business there, Richard Williams, as he threw it back to uh, Benny Nelson. Sharples is on in the middle. He goes that way. Now he's got a player out wide in Cubillo, who's made up, come up from the back pocket. McConnell, his opponent, pumps it away. Good work on the bottom of the pack there by the Glenelg player. Gets a, a McConnell to set up a, a teammate. Holmes. Chance for Holmes. Sends it forward, and Kirkby, the big fella up forward, has taken the mark. Really like Holmes in the middle. I haven't seen much of him, but his skills are dynamite. Yeah, I believe, as I said last week against West Adelaide, he was BOG. 
very impressive as a, a junior has come through the ranks from Glenelg and uh, could, could see him drafted if he keeps his form up. As Rory Kirkby gets his second and Glenelg respond, they move on to 9660, leading Sturt 7547 on the Cockatoo Ridgewine scoreboard. Uh, four minutes gone, third term. They've managed to keep that two goal buffer for, for most of the game, Glenelg, so been able to answer any Sturt challenge to this stage. As we got the uh, lights on, I don't think there are a lot of lucks out here. I don't think they'd play many night games at, uh, at uh, uh, Unley Oval here, but uh, I suppose it might make a little bit of difference. It's very dark and overcast and gloomy day. So Backwell takes the ball away from the contest in the middle. Bit of a wobbly old kick into the forward line. Chance there for Grimmer leading in the race for the ball. Juggles over his head and we have a boundary throw in. I not seen much of Grimmer since that opening five, first five minutes of the game. Well, I suppose Glenelg have got a lot of other avenues towards goal. They've got their tools, they've got their smalls. As the uh, boundary umpire right on the 50 metre arc throws it in. It's Feast this time versus um, the, the Crows. Ruckman in. Oh, it's uh, Doldig. But uh, Whiteman's able to get it out to Crane. A chain of handballs this time. It ends up from uh, Nelson to McClay. Goes to the centre wing with Farmers under it. Man handled there, but uh, well played by Benny Mills. He's, uh, he's forced the ball out of bounds, which looked a very promising sturd attack. Probably not the guy they want doing that, that long kick out of defence, McClay. They need to get the ball to the, the more skillful Cubolo and, and McGlone and those types. Well, last time they went to Cubolo, they turned it over. <laughs> So throw in, good work by Holmes at the front of square of the pack, gets a kick to send Glenelg forward again, but uh, they're going to be outnumbered here. But uh, Bo does well in a situation. Chance now for Evans, gets through traffic, handballs onto a teammate, McGlon. McGlon sends it up the line, looking for Perry, but good defensive work by Sherwood, allows Pinozzo to take away the football and send the Bays back into attack. A high fly from McConnell at oh. the back, no, thumped away from him. Chance now for Fisher, leading in the race. He's got a teammate there. If he just sent it back in board, he does. Over to Holmes. He's met by McGlon. Now is he tackled, holding the ball. Some sports mm. supporters like it. Holding the ball according to umpire Daniel Cow. And McGlon in the back line to relieve for Sturt. He's got Feast presenting a little further up the line. Simon Feast. Was looking to go in board. Still got that player free in Thring, but uh, ignores him and goes further up towards Gum. Good option in the end as he managed to handball to Crane. Oh, and Perry's found yeah. space going back with a fly to the football. And uh, that's probably the second time we've seen Perry do that. It's probably the best way that uh, he's led one way and then gone back the other to get the football there, Giant. Yeah, well presented by Gum up on the uh, half forward line as well. Found space from a, a slow piece of play where Feast had taken a bit of a, a time to get rid of it. As we watch Ian Perry make no mistake, his goal kicking's improved this year. <laughs> and yep. he gets to its eight. They move to 8 5 53, trailing the double blue, sorry, trailing the Tigers on 9 6 60 on the Cockadoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. And that's Ian Perry's first goal. He's uh, done a couple of useful things in setting up other goals, but uh, you were there at uh, Nord Oval, the, the round one, Damien, where he kicked 6 3 in a BOG performance, his first game for Sturt. And Quite hasn't quite measured up to that since, but uh, been a contributor. As we uh, back in the centre and Feast jumps high, but Cranston wins the tap. It's uh, Sturt though through Sharples. Lovely handball out to Thring. Thring's been tackled and dispossessed as gives uh, Glenelg the chance. This is by Backwell onto Pinozzo. There's a Sturt player down behind play. I think he's going to get up, but uh, Pinozzo's kicking to Doldy. It's just gone over too far for him, and uh, McClay is just going to see it over the boundary line. And um, was, that, was that Crane that was down before? The uh, it was ground? either Whiteman or Thring. They've got similar haircuts. They've both yeah, got I, a number one, I think. I called, uh, yes, I called uh, Thring for Whiteman earlier. They are very similar looking. If uh, Thring turns out to be another Whiteman, it's there to be very happy. As um, the big Doldig's in the, uh, the bottom of that and not very far out from the Glenelg goals. If they can get a goal here, that, uh, that two goal buffer that uh, Jai was talking about will, will continue. As Feast. Oh, chance for McConnell. Reads it best oh, off the pack, are. but doesn't finish too well. He's missed everything there. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> unpredictable. <laughs> said. Gee, that yeah. uh, that trick fell right out of his sleeve yeah. and off his boot. Yeah. <laughs> that situation there. He, yeah. he had it all summed up. He did everything yeah. right, but uh, just convert. So, boundary throw in. 
Oh, the Ruckman are down. Feast gets it from to over to Sheedy. Bit hot for the for Cubillo. He's, he's got a bit of a, a task set here. Tries to kick while uh, whilst he's lying down on the deck there. Sharples gets it to Feast. Oh. Feast, well, a bit of a high hand pass and allowed Glenel to get the football there. But uh, Sturt Player and Evans provided the smother. But Glenel prevail here as the ball sent back in their forward line. Gum flies high. The fists come from the Sturt players, but uh, Glenelg seemed to have the crummers. Backwell is one of them. He's going backwards again, and he's got McConnell in oh! space, and he's left it behind again. What's he thinking, McConnell? Goal number five's eluded him. As it uh, goes to Bode, and Bode's missed everything, but the ball is in in play. Chance for Dolan. Good defensive work by Sturt, and allows, uh, is it Whiteman there on the last line of the fence? They win that contest really well. Chance now for Sharples, but it's thumped away from him. And great pressure there by the Sturt side, Jai. Brilliant work by McClay to get down low, the big fella there. He, he doesn't like giving away any goals at all. Uh, that's a comedy of errors there. That's uh, McConnell. He's showing us every everything today, the good and the bad. Mm. He's going to have to ch put on some gloves. Ball slipping through his fingers at the moment. It's two desperate sides at the moment. Both sides are going on really hard. A very entertaining game. The, the greasy conditions hasn't changed the standard. As, uh, as time it's Goldie to intercept the stern handball, but right on the line, it's Walk. Nice little kick out uh, to the back pocket there. And that's, um, that's Sheedy. Sheedy playing loose with back, loose or back, back pocket. Normally in the midfield. And uh, he just hasn't got the option. So he's going to go along and just hope for the best as uh, there's a big pack developed there. And uh, Brendan Mule is playing a pretty good game for his uh, milestone today. But, but not uh, paid. Yeah, player uh, in Feast pushed Cranston in the back in that contest. So Cranston will send Glenel forward. Kick up towards the teeth. The goal oh. chance there for Hinge reads the best. Over towards McConnell. Oh, yes. He's made no mistake this time. Throws a hand in the air. Swings the head around and gets the uh, high fives from his teammates as Glenel managed to kick that uh, two goal buffer alive. They're on to 10 uh, 6 66 leading Sturt, 8 5 53. Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard, 12 minutes gone, third term. Starting to see the weather conditions start to play a little bit more of a part now. Just a simple footy, bang it long forward, get your crummies in under the ball and, and hit the goals up. That was sensational play by Johnny Hinge there. He was very, very good with his hands and able to pass on McCrew or McConnell for his fifth straight and uh, he's having a day out as Glenelg get the takeaway again Cranston on to Backwell coming into the game kicks it high up to Goldig he's uh, done well to get the handball out to his uh, teammate in uh, young McGregor the handball back to Goldig an ambitious handball this time because he set that up but Backwell's on the run of the open goal and kick another one Gee, where's that, that lead now? Broken out to 19 points, Guy. The Bays are on at the moment, running forward in numbers, and Sturt really need to get their hands on the footy in the ball, in the middle of the ground. I think Nelson's gone to McConnell now to pick him up, so... Yeah, McConnell has been a headache for uh, the, the Blues defence today. They, you know, they brag of this uh, very tall forward line, but at McConnell, two weeks in a row, has been the, um, the big influential player. And also uh, Hinge in the middle. Hinge has been uh, quite yes. important the last couple of minutes to uh, resulting in back-to-back -back go goals for Glenelg as play recommences in the middle. Cranston flies high, but only towards the advantage of McCrone. He's tackled immediately. Cranston handballs again. Glenelg putting it, the ball forward at all costs, but this time it comes unstuck. As it goes towards uh, Farmer there, goes back towards Cubillo. Sharples has got a couple of players oh, to beat, but the ball slipped through his fingers. And again, he's dumped. They're certainly giving Charlie Sharples a bit of attention here, Jai, this afternoon. Yeah, right in front of the crowd. They love those ones. They're really stirring up these Sturt supporters, because they realise Charlie Sharples is a bit of a hero out here at Unley. He goes back to his uh, teammate at Cubillo, who's come across from Prospect this year. Cubillo, a bit unsure where to go, waiting for an option to present. One is Whiteman, but he's under pressure there. So it re could result in a turnover here. But, uh, DeLuca at the bottom of the pack. Gum over the top of him. And we're going to have a ball up as supporters just trying to find their seats after the half-time interview interval. And I think it's not just the players uh, not used to this pressure. I think the supporters, there's a few uh, hearts racing up here at the moment. They're really knowing Sturt have got a game on their hands today. This is uh, brilliant play by Glenelg. Really putting the, the asset on them at the moment. 
And as the, they always say, the third quarter is the premiership quarter. Glenelg holding sway very nicely as Big DeLuca throws his opponent out. Um, Richard Williams says play on. He's going to have to let it go as uh, Ty Allen tries to rugby yeah. style. Carry the ball through the lines and touch it down. Bit of aggro there yeah. as, uh, yes, Whiteman's always in it. And he's, uh, <laughs> Richard Williams has got between him and Johnny Hinge. Well, it might be cold here at Unley, but it's certainly hot down there in that uh, contest. And umpire Williams throws the footy up. Rucks at it again. Whiteman right in the thick of things. Chance for uh, Glenelg through the agency of Kane. Now he's backed up by Fisher, just sends it high, wide, and handsome. Up the wing, Maluka in best position, juggles, doesn't complete the mark. So Nelson there, tackled his player, and Murphy hit the deck hard. Certainly not an easy one. one to get under those high balls like that. Yeah, just no, juggled no. it out. I noticed young McGregor, he actually went out to watch Luca Market <laughs> and uh, hope he dropped it so he could crumb it. There was no way he was going up then. <laughs> no. <you> <laughs> Probably a smart decision at his height <laughs> as well, I think. So, yeah. bit of a rugby scrum here at the moment. Hasn't left this area in front of us for no. about five minutes. Glenelg gaining a few metres. Chance for Cubillo, but great tackle there by him. Swings him round, puts him on the deck, and we're going to have another ball up right in the corner of the square. You're right, Damien. Hinge is the player that seems to have lifted Glenelg at the moment. He's really going in hard. So, chance there. Cranston does well in traffic. Kane... Races away from the congestion over towards Fisher. Now he's got Brimmer on a long lead and takes a diving mark. Great mark there on a fast, fast leading forward and Brimmer, and he's got the chance to get his second. Good work by Fisher. He's playing that sort of one hand ball behind the pack as well and swung around onto the left there. But Graham has got good pace off the off the mark. And that's a characteristic of the Glenelg side that. Uh, these tall forwards just come into it now and again and Grimmer we haven't seen him for a while he's uh, almost looks fresh the way he's attacked that and uh, just off hands he's missed, a, missed an opportunity to kick a goal though so minor score results so it'll be McGlon from full back to see uh, kick laterally into the back pocket and player and walk there so he elects to go up the line, out towards centre wing, half forward. Oh, chance there for Wicks. Sharples does well. Whiteman scrub, grubbers a kick forward. Chance there for uh, Kane. Good work by Whiteman to send the ball search way, but Glenelg managed to win that contest there through Rewalt. Chance now for McGregor. Does well. Good recovery. Now he winds up, sends the ball towards Glenelg's goal, but it's offline, minor score. Hasn't been down at the end of the ground for a good, probably five to ten minutes, I think. They got yeah. the first goal of the quarter, but yeah. they haven't responded since. And last week, it was the third quarter where Glenelg really killed off West Adelaide. Seven goals, seven in, in a very short time, and they're playing that way again. I don't know what uh, Mark Micken does at halftime, but he, it's working. Chance here for Sturters. Gum's got some space. Takes on a couple of opponents. He's got a teammate out wide. Sends it up towards the teeth of goal. Oh, nearly marked there to Herring. Unable to bring it down. He's tackled immediately and he's rushed over the line. And the first score to Sturt for a while. They moved to 8 6 54, trailing the 11 8 74 on the Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. Should have taken that, Deluca. And that's a 21 point lead at the moment. And Glenorg even look going further ahead as it's coming down there to re, uh, rewild direction. Big Seller's got the ball now, turns around. It's got McConnell under it. He had to do well to mark that, and he did very well under pressure from Ben Nelson. Good there decision is. by Seller there not to, to try and force the handball through. The guys were past him, so he just steadied and snapped it around. Great little pass from McConnell there. It's given Goldie the opportunity. I wouldn't have been surprised uh, if McConnell even had a shot from there because he's very capable from the uh, cute angles, but it's given it to Doldig, who's he's going to line up now for his... Uh, has, hasn't kicked one today. Normally he's good for two or three. Now, you mentioned the tall forwards. There's 12 centimetres difference between Walk and Doldig there. So yeah. there's Sturt defenders have got their hands full as Matthew Doldig goes back and makes no mistake. And that margin's out to 26 points. And uh, I just see a couple of danger signs stick up in the crowd for Sturt. It's those tall forwards, they, 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 as you say, the, the, the walk would normally get a, a much smaller player, but there's just too many of them out there. And most sides are finding this against Glenelg every week. 
They don't need one of them to kick sort of four or five. If they all chip with one or two each, then they're going to kick a winning score. Yeah, spread the load. Yeah, well, uh, McConnell's got different ideas. He's already got five. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He's a one-man band. <laughs> Bit of a show pony. Yeah. But uh, back in the middle. And chance for Crane. Kick is smothered. Goes high. Out to Sheedy. But he's got to play on immediately. Tackled by Hinge. Pushed in the ground. And he'll get the free kick. And uh, yeah, Sturt being fairly quiet this term. Sheedy looking for Perry, but there's a pack of Glenelg players around that football. Sharples is there as well. He's tackled <laughs> straight away, and we're going to have a baller. And that man, Ben Mills, again getting Sharples. He's really uh, making it hard work for him today, isn't he? As De Luca. That tap, but uh, they need more out of De Luca today because uh, they've got a big 27 point deficit at the moment. As Glenelg now come down through Sugars, played well into that open area. This time he's found another one, and this time uh, it was Grommer that dropped the ball. McLean, oh, intercepted oh, by Grommer. Brilliant play. This guy's had big wraps on him coming over this year from the uh, Geelong system. Walk. Now onto Sheedy, onto Nelson. Experienced players now. Able to find something in gum on the wing on the outer side. Is he finding someone there in Crane? Yes, well played. Sturt's the best they've looked for some time as Crane's going to bomb it in long. He's got a one on one with the Sarge. Can't hold on to it. Great Good pressure. Spoil. That's yeah, that man Rudolph again. He's a great defender for Glenelg. Uh, Rudolph, just... the red nosed defender. <laughs> oh, McConnell's free on the wing. Farmer on the mark there. Decides not to creep over. McConnell borgs around him, finds Rewalt. Rewalt's got player running in Kane. Kane's trapped in the pocket. He's got to get around Nelson. He won't be there. Took the player on. And Ben Nelson will take the free kick in the back pocket for the double blues. One of the co-captains here. Sturt have to get a move on in this quarter. There's 21 minutes have ticked over. And Perry, and again, he's got three to beat. And with the player coming in and Pinozzo sort of chopped the arms there a bit. And the Sarge has got the free kick, centre wing. Kicks towards Herring. He's in front of his opponent. In Sugars to Herring. He elects to go long. He's got Chambers, one on three. Chambers appealing for the free kick. Now he gets up from that contest. Can he recover? No, he's tackled by Boat. Goes in after it again. Brandt Chambers trying to handball towards Evans, but Glenelg there with numbers. Mills gets it off to his teammate. Chance now for that's Sugars, Sugars there on the mark. And Sugars will steady things up for Glenelg as the teammates run forward of the football. Okay, we've, we've well into time on now. It's at the 22-minute uh, mark of the third quarter. Glenelg have got a uh, match high lead at the moment and uh, it's uh, Rudolph played a great game today very impressive player over to Matty Bode bats in up back position Sugars is on his own near the centre on to Kane he's a long kick Kane he should bang it right into the uh, almost the 50 metre area just about has as uh, Rory Kirby's underneath the ball Glenelg are just showing a lot more application at the moment Sturt seem to be under pressure all the time as uh, Sheedy gets it out to Gum and he's going to steady and hold up play a little bit until he can find a loose man. Both teams sitting an extra player back behind the ball at the moment. So, so Gum got the player in McGlone. Now there's someone free in Farmer. We just get it to him. Now see what the forwards do here as Farmer goes through up the corridor, finding Herring. Goes back, nearly completed the mark. Then he's got a chance to recover. Now he has to get on around the corner of that right boot. And he's got a much needed goal for the double blues. Ryan Herring gets his first and the Sturt's, I think it's their ninth goal. They'll move on to 9-7-61, trailing Glenelg 12-8-80 on the Cockadoo Ridgewine scoreboard. So it brings that margin back to 19 points. Really important goal, that one for the Double Blues. If that had gone down by five goals, it, it would have been tough to get back. But back with a chance now. As we uh, the umpire now has the ball in the centre. We've reached the 20, nearly the 24 minute mark and uh, Glenelg uh, will, will reply. They're not going to let Sturt get away with it because they're playing really good football. As young... Um, Johnny Holmes. Johnny Holmes. Well, Tommy anyway. Yeah. I, don't, I hope he's... Son of. 
I don't think he uh, fathered many people, Johnny Holmes, <laughs> as, uh, as the ball comes <laughs> as it comes out to McConnell. Nice little kick out to Doldy. Oh. He should take this. Yes. He yeah, yeah, yes. yes. doesn't move kick there. him. He's coming off McConnell, but uh, he's done his bit again. Todd looking for a second of the quarter. Yeah, they're all bobbing up as they did last week. Most of them have, uh, have all had a contribution in that uh, very star-studded forward line. But again, uh, Sturt get a goal, and Glenelg have answered immediately with another shot on goal as we watch Matthew Doldig. No, this time. Oh. He, he let score. you down, Damien. He certainly had it, had it down for him. Yes, I thought he was going to make no mistake there, but a bit of a relief for Sturt. So uh, they still have time, I believe, to get another goal before uh, three-quarter time. But, over the mark. but That's what pressure yes, does. Yes, and McGlon there is... Uh, crept over the goal square line and so we have a ball up right in Glenelg's goal square. Richard Williams throws up the football. Rucks Adam. Chance there for Sturt. They will just rush it behind here and uh, will reset again. I think they realise if Glenelg get a goal right now they would be um, too difficult to get back. They're just playing too well. Yeah, certainly the, the uh, momentum has been with the Bays in this quarter so far the uh, biggest lead of the game they got out to 25 points at one stage chance there for Holmes but uh, unable to collect the football there picked up by uh, was it uh, Matty Bode Bode there gets it off I oh! <laughs> wanted to <laughs> appealing for every free kick the Sturt supporters in the stands here as the ball sends up towards good uh, Glenelg's goal good recovery there by McGregor but uh, Sturt will prevail here chance for Farmer Got a bit of space now. Who's going to lead up the ground? It's Herring. He's got two to beat. One of them is Seller. Herring paddles it forward. Charlie Sharples going to the back, back of his opponent. And he's just giving a bit back Charlie Sharples after he's been uh, put down a couple of times. And unfortunately, he's given away a free kick, and Fisher will take it for Glenel. Okay, Fisher now onto the wing. There's plenty of options there, and this time Mules onto Pinozzo. This time. Rewild now. It's a very high kick in. Good luck to anyone to take this one. But uh, they're, they're, that's Johnny Hinge here going in recklessly. Yeah, he's backed it up with a great Gee. tackle. Cheers, this guy on fire this quarter. Just trying to really imposing himself physically on the contest. Rubs those tackles into the ground when he gets hold of someone, and he's one of the best athletes in the SNFL. Disappointing for him to be cut from the Crows. I think he had something to offer. But uh, anyway, to Glenelg's credit, he's going to stay with them and uh, prove them wrong. As uh, Sturt this time get the takeaway in through Young Crane. You need more out of him. Sharp pulls down. Takes a chest mark on the wing. He's got player in the mid middle to go to. Needs to get a move. He's missed that opportunity. So he goes down the, down the line and, and finds Evans. Evans has got Crane on. And now, Crane can use his pace. Now, this is a chance here for Sturt as Crane runs inside 50. He's got Chambers one out with Rudolph. Bit of a wrestling going on. Chambers, will he get the free kick? Yeah. Yes, he will this time. And the Sturt supporters rise to their feet and throw their hands in the air <laughs> as Grant Chambers has got a free kick right on the three quarter time siren. And it's and a at 25. Meet. So, a much needed goal coming up for the Double Blues. And this one will go on the Green Hill Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they've got plenty of time to walk up to Green Hill Road to collect it as a three quarter time siren has sounded. Front Chambers yeah. makes no mistake and goes bang and it hits the rooftop. There it goes, down, bounces off that Commodore, trickles down, down the, the road. And, and someone's got it and gone yeah, home. Gone home and a much needed goal there to the Double Blues. And they move to 10 7 67, trailing Glenelg 12 10 82 in the Pine Lodge match of the day here at Unley. And Jim, just quickly, the goal scorers. Yes, uh, Justin McConnell leads away with an impressive five goal haul so far in the game. He's off the ground at the moment, so we'll see how he can add to that. Grimer's got one, Blackwell one, Holmes, Bode, and Doldy uh, with Kirkby with two for Sturt. Ford it now to Chambers, four goal two today, two to Farmer, one each to Herring, Perry, Evans and Crane. So we'll catch our breath here at Unley and be right back. Okay, so final quarter about to commence here at Unley. The deficit for the Double Blues is 15 points. Can they 
go through again undefeated. We'll find out in about 30 minutes time as umpire Cal throws the ball up to recommence play here. Chance now, Sturt again out of the middle. Chance for Herring, bounces off his chest, bounces towards Mills, doesn't get it quite handled, straight through traffic, nearly does the impossible, kick towards goal, Chelsea oh, Chambers right. takes a fantastic mark, great wrestle there with Rudolph, and Chambers finding his way to front position, would go back and make no mistake, so he's getting back-to-back -back goals in, at the end of the quarter and the start of this final term. Really good work in the middle by DeLuca, hooked that one back behind him to Sheedy, who was able to get the ball forward. And great play by Crane, adverse to speed. That's, the stars are, are shining, and Sturt needed to get off to a good start. And uh, as the rain comes too, which won't help their cause. But as uh, Chambers has put it through for his fourth. And uh, as Damien said, two consecutive goals. Just interrupted by three quarter time. There's uh, 99 points in it now. Is it still anyone's game? And still a, ch and a change of the football again. There's, uh, <laughs> Maybe it's a problem with pressure. Yeah. There's not enough uh, air in it. Or they're, just, they're not or using we'll go back, Or brand. they're going back to the mini-league football. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, but uh, it's Sturt that have shown firsthand, and they needed to really badly. Then. Dueling, a really endurable contest. Oh. This is Cubello. Uh, so takes yeah, the ball out of the centre. Yeah, shipped in the middle. That's got to be changes made. Rick, Rick McGowan was one of the last people off the ground at three quarter time. He obviously is, uh, hasn't been in this position for a while. As um, the Gunnell player has been brought down the ground by Wicks, that's Holmes. Goes out of bounds and uh, gets a pat for his troubles from his teammate. Just quickly, Jim, uh, Sturt went through the trials undefeated, didn't they? Yes. And, and that, so first four rounds this season. So and they've yeah. only lost one game until today in all grades. Yeah. And they, what, they lost the reserves today, did yeah. they? No, they won the oh, reserves. They, won the reserves. they lost, lost the first reserves game against Snowwood earlier yes, this year. Yes, and that's year. the only game the whole club's lost this year. Uh, credit to uh, to turning a footy club around that was sort of down the bottom about two years ago. As uh, Glenelg race away from the contest, the player in Holmes gets a teammate to Murphy into space to send the Bays forward. Up the big men fly. Chance there for Hinge. Good work by Grimmer. Gets a uh, shot on goal, but he's missed to the right, and the minor score results. So Glenelg just extend their margin to 10 points this Good. early in this final quarter. Good work by the big fella Grimer there. It was two on one, managed to force the contest and, and get back on his feet and get the ball at that goal. So McGlon, he's uh, trying to push the players back, no, and then asking them to come forward. As he sends the ball out, looking for the Ruckman and Feast, comes out towards Wicks. Good handle, now finds De Luca. Q Billow's in oh. a bit of trouble here, falls to the ground. Got rid of the football, but uh, only to uh, turn it over towards Allen. Allen sends Glenel forward again, but it's going to trickle towards goal. Minor score results, and uh, Glenel now up 12 12 84. 11 7 73. Cockatoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. Your commentator is Jim Hump. And that was a bit of a hospital handball by DeLuca. They could have really attacked there. He put the player under pressure and Glenelg let, let them off the hook with the point, but they could have actually really made them pay. And they could have make them pay here too as uh, they put it into their forward line again. This time uh, Nick Walk is able to just take, cut off the attack. The umpire's been a bit pedantic there, uh, making the man on the mark. Now he's got Charlie Sharples on a lead here, but uh, it's gone way, way over him. But oh! It's uh, Tristan Gum flies. Gee. Almost. Well, he did bring rain. As it's over to um, Palmer. Looks impressive today as he kicks it into the... Oh, oh James 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 nearly. had his hand on it. Sugar's got the ball out. Over to Mules. Off to Rudolph. Very impressive player, Rudolph. Had Gee. his hands full, but done a great job as back back will now. Over to Kane, and he's going to kick long to a leading uh, Rory Kirkby. And he takes the ball, about centre wing, out of sight. He nearly reached the top of the Joke Odie stand here, <laughs> Ryan Herring. Joke Odie? I don't think Jack Sturt Odie. supporters Jack, like Joke saying Odie. that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Be interesting to see if Mark McCann persists with uh, Hinge up in the goal score. He was one of the catalysts to uh, get the Glenelg team up and going in that third quarter. So. That's an unusual role with so many good forwards, isn't it? That they throw, uh, a, not a noted forward, but a very gutsy player in Hinge to, to stir him up, get, get something happening. So tackle on Holmes there, finds yeah. the ball, gets it out to Fisher, but he's set upon immediately by player in Fiddock, who's come 
from the Northern Territory Football Institute. Uh, just got a message from Sydney where he was from, so didn't realise they had a football institute up there. Chance now for Sturt. Whiteman jams it onto the boot, looking for Perry, but eludes both Perry and Sherwood, and Evans cleans up for Sturt. Chance now for oh, Perry. Wow. That's a good better mark. And on the back of Mook Mules there, Ryan Herring has got Chambers running out from the goal square. Now he goes back with a flight of the football, but it's thumped away through for a minor score. Good work again by Rudolph. Chambers has got five goals, but there's been plenty of contests that Rudolph has come out on top on. And we talk about the, uh, the, the many choices in the forward line for Cornell, but don't forget Sturt uh, with not only Chambers and Perry have got Herring as well, and that's, that's a three-studded, very good forward line as well. As uh, Sugars takes the, uh, the ball, ten up back. Sherwood takes it now. He's got time to run. Go. Pass is indirected though, but Dordic, Doldick's good enough to uh, take the ball. Come slips out of uh, James McClay's hands. Doldick is a, normally a powerful kick. Johnny Hinge, that uh, matchup that uh, Joe was talking about being the, um, the I suppose, wild card down at the forward line, unexpected. Made to earn it by Whiteman as well. Loves the well, they're both niggle. tough players, aren't they? So mm. it'd be a good duel. It's not going to bother Hinge too much, I don't think, that kind of stuff. No. Uh, they're both very hard players, and, and he's certainly in the second half shown a lot of tenacity. If he can kick this goal, give Glenelg a bit of breathing space, he'll uh, be really rewarded by his teammates. Comes in, off the boot, straight through the middle, and Pye has not moved. Our players are coming in all over the place. I think he's a bit of a um, well-respected guy at this footy club, John Hinge. He's uh, set, shows by example all the time, but he's going to come off. Triple yeah. change, by the way. Yeah, triple change. So. Nope. No, 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 you got no. the goal, you can stay out there. Yeah. <laughs> you deserve to stay out there. So, Glenelg extend their margin. is back out to 16 points. 13-12-90, playing 11-8-74. Cockadoo Ridge Wine scoreboard. Damotainment.com time clock has just ticked over to eight minutes. Back up in the middle. Chance there for Allen. Fighting hard, trying to get that ball out. Player at the bottom of the pack. Again is Allen. And we're going to have another stoppage. Umpire Carey. There. We'll throw the ball up for DeLuca and Cranston. DeLuca gets a good knock to the advantage of Sharples, but uh, bounces away from him. Goes in after it again. You're going to have another stoppage in the middle. Interesting to see Matty Bode on the bench again. He spent a lot of time on the pond today, so you wonder whether it's a fitness issue or whether the rotations are working in the way that he's on the, off the field a lot. Or yeah. perhaps match-ups. Well, mean anything, you know, they've got, got, got a pretty tall forward line, and with his hinge still playing in yep. the forward line, yeah, there can't yeah, be too much room. Push-ups as we speak. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's very fit. Uh, Matty Boat, as I said last week, I reckon he only had three kicks for his three goals. So uh, yeah, well, it's not the sort sort of role you normally. Well, that's all you in. need for three goals, isn't no, it, Jim? Three kicks. That's, but he's normally a high possession getter, and in, in in the sort of crumbing role he normally plays, roving around the ground. Good as work by Deluca. Finds Gum in space, and Gum's got a player out wide and Farmer. Finds him. Now Sturt can set up again here. Justin McConnell is about to come on. He's, uh, he's certainly uh, been missed out there for a while. Chance for Perry. Flies high. Recovers best. The other bald-headed eagle in face chips a kick to Nelson. He's under pressure. Sends it back towards goal. Chance for Chambers! Slip no, through. he's dropped it. Comes through again. Tackled over the line. We'll have a boundary throw in deep in Sturt's attacking zone. Chambers did everything but mark it there. He made position very well, but just fell out of his hands to the for death. As the boundary umpire throws it in, it's Feast versus Cranston. They neither of them got it. They pushed each other out of the contest as uh, Charlie Sharples tries to uh, kick the ball in. Right alongside the behind post for uh, Sturt. As... Uh, we now go to 10 minutes into the last quarter. Sturt need a goal very badly here as the Ruckman jostle again. Feast taps it to no one in particular. Murphy's first one there. Oh, great uh, slinging tackle there by Perry. But, uh, but Pazano, Panozzo takes the clearing kick. 
Down to the wing. It's a two and one contest. And a great mark by McRae. Sent up back from Sturt. Very, very uh, timely mark. They need the next goal. They need it now. So McClay sends Sturt forward, looking for Perry. He's got two to beat. Seem to be double teaming the uh, Sturt and Glenelg forwards. Both sides defending stoutly. Chance for uh, now is it uh, McGregor on towards Dolden. Good pace by the big fella. Sends it towards goal, but he's offline. And a minor score to the base. They move to 13-13, 91, leading Sturt, 11-8, 74. Could have nearly shut the door with that one, Dolden. Hopefully he doesn't come back to bottom. Yeah, that's, that's left the door open, as as you say, for Sturt now. They are starting to play. They're realising their, their fate's in their hands right now. It's uh, Daniel Wicks, who started the game very promptly, has died out of it, but kicks the ball down to Christian Gum. He, he's doing very well on that outer wing. To Perry. They're just taking it slowly, just one at a time, and um, trying to set something up here. If... Uh, Glenelg get the next goal. Could be Curtains. They must keep possession. Ooh, as the nearly uh, came unstuck Deluca. there. Oh, Runs around. dances around. <laughs> Pirouettes very nicely. Sends a long bomb up towards Chambers. The big pack flies. Chambers best to recover there too as well. But he's got a couple of players to beat. And player there disguised it pretty well. They really need to get a, a, a crummer pushing up. You've got a contest there with Herring, Chambers and Feast there all together. But no one on the ground once it gets down there. So... And seems to be left to Chambers all the time. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. So Kirkby, the player it was, who uh, disguised that. And we have a boundary throw in. But stirred a chance here. Feast trying to burst his way through. Shovels it out towards Crane. Snap around the body. Yes! Goal! Great goal. Great snap there by Luke Crane. And Sturt get a much needed goal to stay in this contest. They're 12 8. 80, trailing the Bays, 13, 13, 91, Cockatoo Ridge one scoreboard, 12 minutes gone on the Damotainment.com time clock. And there is one that can play that small forward role for them, Sturt Crane, when he pushes forward like that. Is this, while he's in the midfield, it is something that's probably lacking from their team, someone to get underneath the feet of Chambers and, and Perry and those types of guys, but Lucky Crane's certainly got the skills and the goal sense to be damaging when he, when he pushes forward. And Michael Bratton just come on the ground, I think it's the first time we've seen him all day. Have you seen Michael Bratton on the No, corner? I have not seen him. It's a really unusual move. He's sat out on the pine all day, and he's just come on in the, uh, into the forward line. Sharples. He's a defender. As Charlie Sharples streams forward, can he be in the play now? Oh. Not to be. Uh, just a bit of a poor kick, and uh, the Forest, Paul Sherwood, intercepts that uh, so delivery. Obviously. Obviously, both powerless players that were named in the team, Bentley and Pierce, not taking their part today. Yes, yes. So, so Fisher, through traffic, gets the ball moving forward for Glenelg. Chance there for McGregor and Dolding. Juggle there by Dolding, does well. Recovers over towards Kane. Kane sends Glenelg inside, 50. Chance, Farmer does well. Nice little hand pass to Cubillo. He's backed up by Walk, has to sit and wait. Backed up by... Q Billow, bit of a high, short high kick out towards a team out on the other side. Appears to be Evans there in front of Hinge. Craig Evans got teammates in the middle of the ground. One of them is Farmer. He's played a good game here this afternoon. Kicks the ball out towards the Christian Gum direction. Sorry, it's Herring. Herring keeps the ball in, but it trickles back over again. And we're going to have a boundary throw it in Sturt's uh, full forward pocket. And uh, mentioning Greg Bentley, uh, I saw this game uh, a few weeks ago against Central Districts and it was Bentley and Adam Thompson, the two power guys that were best and second best on ground. And uh, I thought they were both going to get drafted in the power side and uh, Sturt should suffer and it's proven to be. But Chance for Perry, great steal there. Has a shot on goal, but misses. Will. Wow. Gee. So Sturt are now, doing all the attacking. Tell you what, that would have been an interesting joy if Sturt had got that one. They're really pressing at the moment. They would have brought it within five points. So that's uh, it's it's Fisher now. Been a good player for a couple of years for Glenelg. Puts it down to Murphy. Gee, under a bit of pressure from Gum, but takes it. They just need to steady a bit, Glenelg. Sturt are doing all the running at the moment and uh, realising that their uh, their time is now, and uh, Glenelg just have to hold up and maintain their lead. But, uh, yeah, it seems to be the attacking end this half, Jim. Yep, saw the Glenelg come out and kick a few turn. goals in that third yeah. term, and now Sturt. White is down. down. Yep. Oh, oh, it's oh another right. player. And, uh, it's cool. and yeah, he's yeah, reversed it. On. No, he's let it go. What's he doing? He's reversed <laughs> it. Reversed and reversed. 
Two reverses. Two reverses. Which means forward. Yes, two, re <laughs> two reverses and one step forward. As two. the kick comes out to Bode, Bode eludes the player in, in Fitok. Sent. Turning point, sir. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I didn't yeah, catch the player that took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. Still plenty of time for this game, sir. <laughs> Who was Calm it that down, put sorry. down Kirkby then? No need to wave your fists. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> As uh, Seller has got the mark. Good Ian. to see, Good and to see the Sturt supporters very, very passionate oh, today. Yes. They're firing today. <laughs> but uh, no, that was that was poor play there by the Sturt side. Turning the ball over. They had the opportunity. Whiteman had no one on the mark. And they could have raced away and they could have been lining up for their goal. But a yep. uh, bit of undisciplined work there. And results in James Seller. The Crows listed forward to line up and get his first. first. Yeah. Had a quiet afternoon in front of goal. That's right. But he's kicked a much needed goal there, Jai. That's right. He was the uh, fourth tall forward yet to uh, get on the, the scoreboard for the Bays. But they've all got one each now. And uh, the gentleman in front of us did call it right. That was the turning point. That uh, reverse decision, um, Damien just said, has now put the Melbourne in a very comfortable position with 17 minutes gone. Sturt could have actually been right in this game, and now it's going to be really tough for them, but I'm sure they're still going to be out there trying. Yeah. So Umpire now, got it. it's Richard Williams, throws it up, feast in the centre. Gets his hand to it, but uh, they need the takeaway, and Crane's doing with that. But oh, Murphy now, long pickup. kick out of the centre. He's given it a, let's say, a two on one situation to uh, Seller, but uh, little um, McGregor over it. McConnell's there. Haven't seen much of McConnell. I know he's been on the pine, but he, he's uh, probably looking forward to getting a couple of more goals as we now go on the uh, Cockatoo Ridge scoreboard. 16 points, uh, Glenelg's favour. Pretty steady in goal just before as uh, Sturt now get the opportunity through Farmer. Tackled well. Some passes play on. Leg there, uh, Sheedy. And uh, he needs to get the ball moving fast. Does so. So Alexa to come grandstand wing. Chance for Sharples. He's been the go-to man. Got some crane in support there. And appeared to uh, be tackled without the football, according to umpire Richard Williams. Plays on straight away. He's got Feast on in the middle of the ground. Got a teammate, Sheedy, running for him. Now here's a chance for Sturt as Chambers got three to beat. Now who's going to recover best? It's Big Chambers. But uh, Glenelg have numbers there. Oh, sloppy handball there. Oh, nearly came unstuck. And, uh, oh. Nervous so well. moments for Mark McGinn. They certainly know that uh, Chambers is the go-to man. I think he was, what, what three team there. Yeah. I've done well to cut in front of him. Get the... Uh, the uh, Glenelg on ball is drifting back to help out the back line and cut off those leads. So a good kick by Mules. Out towards the outer side. Chance for Allen. Being worried there by Wicks, but uh, Perry picks up. Sends the ball back in, but there's no one home. And Sherwood, his opponent, takes the mark. It's going to slow things down here, Glenelg. I think you'll find this has definitely proven one thing today. Uh, Sturt are still a good side, but Glenelg are really are the real deal this year. They've, so uh, you pick them as a game. top three team, Jim? Oh, I definitely think they're a top three team. Both these are a top three team. Uh, but with the outs for uh, the AFL, Sturt uh, are struggling to match it with, with Glenelg today. Every time they get near, Glenelg have the answers. Terring now. Nice little kick into Crane. He's had a good last quarter, Crane's trying yeah. to lift his side. Yeah, he certainly uh, kept Sturt in it in this last term. Luke Crane now goes short again to Perry, just outside the 50, in front of Fisher there. Now, where will Perry go? Now, they got the big now rush Chambers. from Cranston, and the couple filling the hole there for Chambers. Now, he, they go towards Chambers. He's got a couple of beat. Will he come out the back of the pack? No, over the top. And it's been a push out. By perhaps, was that Chambers on Rudolph there? Yep. He's getting frustrated, Chambers. There's a lot of attention on him. He's got to get used to this. He can't have it his own way all the time. And Glenelg are just uh, too good at the moment. As uh, we find Sugars, half back, down the wing. Little um, Ty Allen tries to keep it in. Probably quite happy to keep it out. I think uh, time's on their side at the moment. They're quite happy to chew it up. Sturt need, what, three goals now. It's going to be hard from here. So about five, I would say about five minutes left in this game. 
chance now for Glenelg. Kane running through. Big kick forward. Looking for uh, Seller there out in the lead. Now approaches the football but tackled straight away. Murphy at the bottom of the pack. Goes in after it. He's got to knock the ball out here. But uh, umpire Williams just adjudicates no opportunity to get rid of it there in that situation. We're going to have a ball up. Certainly not giving up the Sturt players. I think they might run out of time, but they're going to push right to the end. So Feast and Kirkby contest. Backwell there. Has a bit of trouble getting a handle on it. Now backed up by Pinozzo, but he sends the ball over the line. And although Backwell's played a pretty good game, uh, a couple of years ago, for a win like this, it would have been Backwell would have been the dominant player. He's got a lot of teammates that can play just as well as him these days at the Sconeld side. They're a very good unit. Play, coach very well as Ben Kane comes through. It's uh, Sharples now. Leaves the Gee. ball behind. Uh, it's ben Kane's taking a long time to get up there. And um, it's, go it's going to be a Sturt free. They need to move it fast. Yeah, John Hinch knows that. He's slow to give it to them. So Sharples, centre wing. He's got the lead from Herring. So it looks in that direction, but uh, Mule's in best position there. Sheedy reads it best off the pack, but uh, he's tackled immediately. Just need to tie it up the Glenelg players, really yeah. slow the play down. They're doing it well too. They're, they're very, very tenacious in that uh, back half at the moment. As Richard Williams throws it up, it's a great duel with Feast and Cranston, but it's Sheedy high up and under kick. Good luck to anyone there. As Sharples taps oh, it on. Yeah. Didn't Ooh, work. Could, could have picked it up in that situation. Yeah, but uh, there's enough Sturt players around the ball now to get out of this. But uh, through uh, big centre-off back of McClay, there's, there's the chance for uh, Thomas. And under a lot of pressure again from Rudolph. But they get take the mark. In that situation, Jai, he was one out with Rudolph. That's where, where three or four instances we've seen uh, Chambers having to compete with about four or five for an opponent. Especially if he, he gets front position like that, yeah. You really do feel for Rudolph. He's played a pretty handy game, and if Chambers kicks this at six goals. Goes tell by the crowd. Makes no mistake. And a much needed goal there for Sturt, perhaps. And just give him a glimmer of hope coming in the dying stages of, of this game here That's at Tunley. The Pine Lodge match of the day here. Of course, uh, this DVD uh, and alongside many others uh, that are not covered by the ABC are available from Pine Lodge Studios. If you give Charles a call on 827-11669. And Chambers kicked six goals again. He did a lot last year, but I don't think he's earned them as hard as he has today on the duel with Rudolph. It's been one of the duels of the year. As uh, Sturt have to get this take away, and they're going to as a uh, series of handballs bring the ball down. This is what a young um, Fring, Fring the, the white men want to be. As, uh, <laughs> as uh, the younger version of, uh, I think he's as tough as uh, Madness, but uh, he certainly uh, looks like him. So as George Thring. Okay. Yes. I prefer Frank, George. but anyway. <laughs> okay, he's coming off for that and uh, going <laughs> to rehearse his acting as, uh, as young Benny Crane, uh, Luke Crane gets the ball into the chance. Oh. Center. That's oh, a chance chance. Here. No. He's just seems oh, to be good work. Trying, he's trying very hard. Nelson's there, but uh, Pagnozzo, experienced player, on to Ty Allen. Just, uh, oh. Murphy, good oh, player. Get out of this. And they'll get out of this. Great play under pressure. Matty Bode on the wing now. Kicks around his body, and too far around his body. It was a difficult chance there uh, to, to try and but keep that in play. That was great work by the young player in Holmes there. He, he, he really Did contested he? the ball there in that back pocket, then followed up and gave it over to uh, Bode. And uh, they've won the football again here, Glenelg. I, I reckon they're going to hang on here this afternoon. Yes, it's, it's efforts like that have, have, have stopped the all-conquering Sturt side uh, in their tracks today. And uh, credit to Glenelg. They've really had to earn this win if they're going to get up. And at the 24-minute mark, I, Sturt need two goals. And there might be another four minutes. So it's strange things have happened. If they can um, get, the, uh, get this out of this uh, clearance now and... Um, and they're certainly trying, but to the crowd, that looked almost deliberate. I'm surprised the crowd weren't more under that by Bode. He was very happy to see that ball go out of bounds. And it's very dark here. Well, the lights aren't really having much no, effect. No, it's <laughs> good for training. I don't think there'll be many uh, Friday night games at uh, this ground just, just for a while until they get better lights, but it's the best they can do. There's certainly conditions are good now, but 
as far as uh, oh. rain. Allen does well through traffic. Sends the ball up towards the forwards. Chance there for Seller, but out the back of pack. It could be and game set match. match. That's and Grimer. He does it. Does it. Puts it up. He slams the door. I thought it might have been Hinge who would slam the door, but Grimer does it for, <laughs> for the Bays, and they're going to run away with us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you haven't, that's very good comedy there, Damon. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the viewers haven't, haven't heard that one before, but uh, no, look, that was great work there by Glenord, and they're going to run out winners here this afternoon. They're 15-13-103, leading 13-10-88. And Grimer got the first goal of the game and may get the last. Uh, bookends for the for the whole day, and that's uh, it, they all do their job with a couple of goals. It's an interesting lineup for Glenord Way. They, they, they would be a good side to follow. They've, there's plenty of uh, trump cards in their side as... There's one now in Young Holmes. He's a very good young player. Kicks the ball in. Can they get a couple more to uh, almost like make the game a percentage win? Because it's they've, they've certainly got it now. Murphy, Sturt can tell that. Murphy's going to uh, bomb it in long. It's very hard to see down there, but uh, Sturt players are still tr in there trying. They might have given up. Matty Bode's been thrown his body in. Crane, another one. Never stops trying. But the ball was smothered, and Murphy gets the ball. Now, Gum has a chance. He's got an open forward line if he can get it down there. But uh, Nelson dropped out of the game. Bet's thrown his opponent vigorously over the line. It's a throw in. I think the, the thing about this game that's going to be the most pleasing for Mark Micken is that Sturt have continually come at Glenelg and they've been able to answer every time. It's been a very high standard game. Certainly, the Bays have answered every challenge here this afternoon. As Backwell. Races away from the pack. He's got a player free. Now, it's Murphy right on the 15-meter line. Sends a nice, great kick forward, but uh, just to the right there, minor score. So, 15-14, Glenelg. 13-10, Sturt side. It's, yeah, uh, 27 minutes in. It's uh, too late now. There's a wind starting to pick up, but uh, Sturt will uh, be left to ponder what are they going to do to beat Glenelg because uh, Glenelg definitely deserved their win today. Certainly, and of course, a couple of milestones. I think it was Ben Mule's uh, 100th game and Matty Bode's 50th. 50th, correct. Yes, and they'll be out so, celebrating tonight for sure. Uh, in a pub or at the Bay Disco? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they'll be down at their club rooms uh, with plenty of supporters because I think it's a great win for their club. It's a turning point. Uh, um, to knock off the undefeated side. They'll be very, very excited. So, so just... Yeah, big, a, big upset here because all, all the experts tipped, uh, tipped uh, Sturt to win this afternoon. And was it 16 points the margin? And the players are getting an early shower. Yes. As, uh, the rain is pelting down at the moment. It's yeah. even coming into the stand. It's an so, early uh, cold shower. Now, uh, this is one player who hasn't stopped trying for Sturt. It's Luke Crane. Can he finish off here and make the deficit only 10? No. Brings it back to 15 points. Well, he's kicked two goals through today, Luke Crane, and he certainly hasn't been their worst player. Probably their best, I'd say. As um, the rain is really coming in heavy. And uh, a lot of wind. It's certainly very drought-breaking rain this weekend. And uh, it's, uh, it's, the, it's broken the run of Sturt's undefeated run as well. So oh. we saw John Hinge have a pretty good third quarter. McConnell have a pretty good first half. Who do you think has played well for Glenelg? Team effort, really. Um, in my opinion, um, yeah, you, you, you probably hit the nail on the head there. Rudolph's, believe it or not, I think's played well, even though he's had six goals kicked on him. But Holmes, again, is impressed. Fisher, um, Mc, you have to give McConnell, but he does flash into the game. We haven't seen much of him since. What do you think, Joe? I just uh, noted Paul Sherwood's just come to the bench holding his wrist a little bit awkwardly, so... Hopefully there's not too much damage done there. Might just be precautionary this late in the game, but he was, was holding his wrist. So yeah. there's been a few younger players like Sugars and um, yeah. uh, McGregor have uh, Yeah, McGregor hand up was today. good early. Yeah, I think Holmes would be up there, probably uh, uh, with, with Hinge. I think what we're saying is it's been a pretty good team effort by yeah. the base. Yes. And Cranston's done well in ruck, but I'd, there it is. Final siren. Here, it's all over at Utley. And Glenelg, of course, a big upset here today. Winning comfortably in the end. 15-14-104, defeating Sturt 13-11-89. And I tipped 
good old 12 to 18. I'll just remind the viewers of that. <laughs> Yeah, well, as I said, I thought it'd go down to the wire and Sturt might just get up just the home ground advantage. I've been both impressed with both sides this year. And I'll go away believing that they're a genuine finals uh, contender. Yes. And they play Central Districts next weekend. And what a game that'll be down at Glenelg. That's right. Central's and then North Adelaide, both at home, both home games to the Tigers. So we'll really see whether they're going to be pushing for that top two spot after those weeks. Sturt supporters, uh, don't be too un uh, unhappy. They've had a good run and they did keep at Glenelg all day. They were missing Greg Bentley and uh, not that you can say uh, that Daniel Pierce is a player that they normally have, but we're drawn from the side, obviously, for the power today. Might have just unsettled him that little bit when you only get beaten by a couple of goals. I guess uh, you need every edge you can have, but relying on AFL players isn't the way to go. And we just see a correction to the score. I think the goal umpires have made their way over towards the scoreboard there. And just, uh, I think there's maybe a point out. I reckon Sturt may have got another point there. Yep. In the end, but uh, we'll yeah, see it's what going happens. going up now. 90 it's going points. Up 90 points. So did yep. you still oh, get the right, right margin? He, he, he just... <laughs> <laughs> so that's that the point. Yeah, score that correct. The flag's wave. 14 so there you see it. 14 points. So... Uh, Yes, great win to the Glenelg here in the Pine Lodge match of the day. Brought to you by Cockadoo Ridge Wines, the commentators. Well, we'll have the goal scorers first. I'll just read the goal kickers out for those who are interested. Uh, obviously, McConnell didn't add to his five three-quarter time. Uh, two to Grimer, got the first and last goals of the game. Two to Kirkby, one each to Seller, Doldig, Hinge, great game by Hinge, Bode, Holmes, and Backwell for Sturt, six goals to Brett Chambers, another great effort from him. Two Luke Crane, probably their best player today. Two to Farmer, started well early up four line, had to go to the fence to uh, stop McConnell. One each to Craig Evans, Ian Perry, and Ryan Herring. So uh, over to you, Damien. Um, well, final up. wrap up. I think I'll, I'll give I'll give uh, three votes to the young player in Holmes. Uh, uh, Thomas Holmes for Glenelg. I'll give uh, two votes for Luke Crane. Yep. For the Sturt side, as he trying. kept trying all day. And one vote to uh, Justin McConnell for his five goals. He deserves that. Yeah, I, I almost agree 100% with you so on that. So we'll see how they stack up against the Messengers <laughs> match report this yeah. week. All right, thanks very yep. much, Jai, for uh, joining us here today. Thank no you very worries, much, guys. Jim, for your comments throughout the day. And uh, it's myself, Damien Woodard, signing off. And uh, we'll hope uh, you'll hear from us again.